This guy was fucking dead, huh? Dude, Too good. Too many uh, beans, brother. Too many. Okay. Jacob, it's good. What's happening, man? Got the whole crew. What, what up, brother? Sure. This guy last minute he almost flaked on me. Oh. He had to change his flight. He changed his flight though. If you oh, would have right. seen me yesterday, I slept. I went to about at 8 a.m. Woke up at 10. What were you doing? I was on the lawn, baby. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Did you get anything? <laughs> yeah. Yes. A little something he's not allowed to talk about. Though. Yeah. <laughs> he parties, man. He did party? A <laughs> hot chicken, man. Living in? No. Oh, you want a beer? You want a poker? <laughs> I'm trying to beat her on the pod. Why do you never have her on? <laughs> Why well, is gonna have her on? Let's call her. Where she lives? This is so funny. Oh my god. How far are you from my house? Oh shit. Like 25 minutes. Hi. Um. Hi. He he oh, he personally requested you. Who is it? It's Sean. Oh hi. Hi. What are you doing? I can get ready right now. I just kind of got it out of bed. Yeah, come out. Come straight out of bed. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're gonna start. You're gonna jump on. Okay, okay. All right, dude. Oh, dude. How old is she? Sixteen. Sixteen? What? What are you <laughs> saying? That's what no, I, bro. That's what I had to deal with. No, Bullshit. No. Dude, oh my if, god. I didn't. I couldn't even have talked yesterday on a pod, bro. I'm you glad. think so? I know so. Why? I was, bro, I slept for two hours. I was so fucking just tired. So I, I felt retarded, like yeah. legitimately. So like is Are we it, live? We're live. Yeah, we're live, right? Yeah. Um, so you want to fuck my co-host? Yes. Okay. That's solid. I like that. Um, and do you, <laughs> when you when you're like when you're not training, do you party hard? Cuz I party with you a few times. Yeah. Uh, this is really the first time we went out since the fight, right? Or no? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah we la last the last fight when I first met you and we hung out with Six and and Steve. Yeah. That was a little bit more crazy. We partied like multiple weekends in a row. Yeah. This one was like the first time we partied since the fight. Um, yeah. I don't party. We, we, honestly, we don't party that much. Yeah, it's no, rare. No. It's more yeah rare I noticed that. So when you do party, you, you, have, you like to have fun. You like to go I, I tend to go too hard. Yeah. Dude, the cities we live in are like old folks' homes. Yeah, I live in Peoria. Like, there ain't in one nothing L. going AZ. on, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so Peoria, you, the West Side. So when you come out here, you guys so are like I, fucking running. Or Miami. When we come out, when I come out. He didn't yeah. go out once. You didn't go out? I was fucking a little under the weather last week, so I didn't want to got run tested. him down again. We, we, he got tested yesterday. He was negative. But, yeah, he, he didn't go out Friday or Saturday. You didn't go out at all. I did it. Do you dude. not like to go? Because honestly, I don't really. I'm not. Going out is not really my thing. Is it? Is it our age, dude? I don't know. Because we're 31, mature, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Well, when you fucking strike out as much as you do, bud. <laughs> him he's over like 30 <laughs> hey, he's over 30 yeah and he doesn't have standards <laughs> i've probably fucked more bitches in the last year than you <laughs> what where did that come from jay were you th what? yo let's see, let's give see, it to him straight, straight, third jay. party here jay what oh, okay you i mean maybe like you're a little more on tinder in arizona you you definitely try a lot harder than i do yeah i don't try in arizona but when we go out yeah, yeah, Miami, it's hard. It's hard. Texas, it's hard. here. So this, so you have a, you have like a lady though, right? Yeah, we both do. We do. You both do. Yeah, I've okay. been dating my girl for about eleven years. So like, they're obviously because you guys are not holding back on this conversation. They're aware of all this. I didn't know stuff. we were live. Yeah, oh, <laughs> or no. So oh, yeah. both of you do. Uh, this is put polyamory. It's just I don't even know. Yeah, it's hard to Labels. put a fucking label on it, dude. But our girls know how guys are. We've explained to her. Like, guys are horny as fuck. Just yeah. because we want to fuck another girl, it doesn't have to do with you because you're not good enough or you're not hot enough. It just took years to get to this point, and now it works out pretty good. But, but we don't, it's not like a possessive thing. Like, I don't feel like I own Danny, yeah. and she doesn't own me. Like, if I want to come to L.A. and go hang out, like, shh, I'm going. You know, I'm going to. Yeah. And I, you know what I mean? So. so if she's going and doing the same thing, though, is If that she like wanted to. Yeah, if she wanted to. I mean, Danny, right, we have a baby now. She, our, our little princess is one. Um, but if she was like, Hey, I want to go on a trip with the girls. I'm like, like, no, you can't do that. Like if that's what she would have hurt do. your feelings. though, she fucked some other dudes. I would deal with those emotions. I don't know what emotion I'm sure I would feel certain things, yeah. but it, it all comes down to being insecure and jealous. I mean, yeah. I guess jealousy probably stems from, stems from insecurity, but I feel like it w it definitely wouldn't break us up. We wouldn't break up. We wouldn't even fight. If that's what she wanted to do, that's like, what would, how could I say, no, you can't do that. I just, that's where I'm at in our relationship. It's like, if she, we, we do what we want to do. Yeah. How long you been with her? Uh, I've been with Danny <clears throat> since I was 20. 
It's coming up on eight years. Damn. Yeah. That's a for real relationship. Yeah, he's been with Mariah for 11. Mm-hmm. Like, we've been with our girls for a long time. Holy shit. Yeah. And and how, how soon did you guys introduce this, like, hey, I'm going to be doing these other things? About seven years into it. Seven years into it, I started explaining to her, like, how my mind works. And I know it's not because I'm a bad guy. Like, I love you with all my heart. You're my best friend. But I want to fuck other chicks. And I'd rather not just have that on me cheating and hiding it and just being a douchebag. Because I know I'm not a bad person. Yeah. But I like some strange puss. No, you guys are, are solid dudes. Like, from Dang, the moment that I met you guys. Like, oh, even till, you know, yesterday when you guys were like, yo, we're, oh. beat, we're going back. Because we planned the podcast. And then, and then, like, you guys did some other podcasts. And then, obviously, you party didn't, like, couldn't, like, plan for that and went crazy. And you guys pushed your flight back just to be on this podcast. So, thank you guys. Dude, no, I felt so bad. Like, yesterday, we were supposed to do the pod. It would have I wouldn't have even been able to talk this much. I, yeah. I had two hours of sleep and just hung the fuck over. I felt retarded. And the Molly hangover is uh, the worst because you have, fuck, like, dude. your personality I lost. I went. I, I <laughs> fucking was on cloud 700 and I fucking went shit. Where'd you guys go? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Some uh, chain smokers went, house dude, party. We went from have, club, house, house. Okay. Have you ever hooked up with a chick on, on some ollies? Yeah. Some ollie kicks. Once. That might be the highest high on the planet. I don't like it. Love. Yeah, I don't. I definitely didn't like it. Like, Fuck. I liked it, and the, but after the fact, you're kind of like. The come down's not worth it. Yeah. It's never going to be the same. Yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, it just. Yeah. Definitely not something I enjoy. This is back when I was like fucking 20. Is it? You don't 21. enjoy your joy too much. Uh, with, that's right. So you guys had a podcast for how long? Who? Good question. Year. Almost oh, three years yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Almost three are you, years. Are there any other like coach fighters or are there any other fighters in the space currently who are like active, who have a podcast? Coach fighters? I'm probably, Not necessarily coach fighters, but a fighter yeah. or a coach or whatever. There's, I, I'd say a lot of people do. Um, majority, you know, everybody has a fuck podcast now. Like a, like a bigger one. Nothing that I can think. I mean, like Michael Bisbee, I guess he's retired. Yeah. No, but with current, the coach. Current. Not even necessarily with a coach, just oh, a fighter or a coach. Chael Sonnen does good. I see them in the podcast, but no know. current fighters. I think there's a lot, but then you know, you know how podcasting is. It's fucking hard. You got to do it every single week. I think they try it for a couple weeks, and they're just like, "Fuck it." It's hard. Very inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. ours has been very consistent for sure. I mean, you guys are crushing it. Like you crush it, but this is the thing with you. Like before I ever met you, like I saw you fight, and I was like, "Holy fuck, who is this dude? This dude is so entertaining." Which fight was it? Do you remember? God damn, it must have been like. Did I have rainbow hair or was it before the hair? No, you had you had rainbow hair. Yeah, when I it, first saw you. you. Probably, I bet a, and it was a in lot, the UFC. Yeah, a obviously. lot of people first saw my like the Eddie Wineland fight when I knocked that dude off walk away. It was the first time I did the six nine hair, the rainbow hair. That that was probably it. Yeah, and because because uh, I saw you and I was like, I literally remember thinking like, yo, this guy's gonna be like, and and this is no disrespect at all, the next Conor McGregor, and I say that obviously lightly. I just meant like in the sense of like stardom. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? One hundred percent. Because when I saw you, like you fight, like just you just were entertaining, and I, I legit was like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" And I immediately went to your socials, and then meeting you in person, I was like, "Dude, this dude's fucking dope." <laughs> that was fucking fun because we met right in Miami. Um, I don't remember that at first. Oh wait, is that the yeah. the baseball game? The yeah. the six nines fucking yeah. We met. When he the, was in like the, in playing. the van, right? Did, were you you were there when Steve picked us up in the van? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was fucking crazy. Yeah, but you're just like it's it's crazy how 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 successful you are. Obviously, like in in the fight game currently, but also on social. Like, what do you think made that different for you? Besides, like you know, the flamboyant, the colorful hair, all that shit. I think I just enjoy it. It's not like a trying to get a bag thing. It's more of like an enjoyment thing. Like it's just. I just be myself and I'm fucking funny and hot. Which at no, the so beginning, <laughs> like posting about weed and, and posting all this shit got a lot of flack from parents. Oh People saying God, the UFC's bro. not going to like it. Sponsors aren't going to like it. So like but, five years ago. Probably. But truly just having the nuts to just be like, fuck it. I'm just oh, going to be myself. and I'm going to post but didn't it. Nate Diaz did the weed thing like yeah. a long time ago. No. Yeah. yeah. And, but yeah. he just owned it. and was like, fuck it. I yeah. don't care. Mm-hmm. He was like the only one really doing it. But yeah, I'd get calls from my dad. Like, I can't believe you posted that. Like, like well, adults would be like, hey, you're not going to get sponsors. And like, yeah. Like, well, but that's what I like about you. You just don't. It's just you just don't give a fuck. You're just yourself, like unapologetically. Yeah, and I think that's why a lot of people are gravitated towards you. Yeah, no, I definitely, I, I agree. I but, think. but the crazy thing is, even before I met you, and I know that about you, and I could see that on your socials, there was something special, like you in the ring fighting was like super fucking entertaining. Mm-hmm. Where, what do you think, like created that? How, how are you creating? That? Obviously, you like fuck around while you're. It's like you're fucking around while you're fighting. Like I, the thing that I was always tripped on was you'd be fighting, you'd be like. You like do the look back. Yeah, that, that, that was that, the yeah. one that really fucks me up, dude. Uh, it's it's part. I mean, I spin so fast that if I do a little motion like that, you have to either react to. My, I'm gonna spin, 
or I'm going to fake spin and then come on the opposite side. So, it's, I mean, anytime I do stuff where they're dribbling a basketball, I mean, they're all feints. They're all setups. They're all tricks. I mean, I'm when I'm in there, I'm 100% serious. I'm trying to win. That's it. Like, yeah. I'm not trying. I'm not going to do anything to waste energy that I think just to entertain. Like, so these any, are feints, obviously. Every time I'm doing – anytime I'm doing anything, it's a setup. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely uh, – it's not just for – the fans entertainment it just looks i mean i guess it kind of looks are like people that, like but. in slow motion for you because like i'm just dude. curious like when you're fighting and obviously we we see it on the outside we're like yo he's hitting like you're just hitting these shots yeah does it ever feel like the other guy's just like super slow i've definitely been in there with people i'm like oh fuck this guy is like dude a ma- majority of the people because we train with such good motherfuckers and sugar's so fast both sides and if you watch some of his fights from when he was 16 17 years old he'd have his hands down he's a l- little lanky twig but we got the with this strength and conditioning coach named brandon harris and he's put on some serious size some serious explosive like uh muscles and now he's super healthy growing into his body a little bit and we're just working around those strengths that when he was 16 17 years old and just building on those yeah because you you've like it's like you're just so fucking quick, man. You're so yeah. explosive. I think just I grew up an athlete. I didn't I didn't start fighting till 16. I remember my dad would watch UFC when I was like 13, 14. I thought I was so fucked up, dude. Like I didn't understand how you'd kick him in the body and the ribs wouldn't break and then punch him in the head and they like I didn't like it. I fucking hated it. But I grew up playing basketball, soccer, baseball, football. So I was just like an athlete. And then my buddies like, hey, you want to check out a fighting gym? And I was just insecure, and I was like, "I'm gonna get some." How, chicks. What age was this? Sixteen. Okay. Like, I'm gonna get some chicks, kind of. Because because you were like, "I'm gonna learn how to fight." I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna. I, the girls are gonna think that's cool. Yeah. That's what I, that like was pretty much one of the main reasons I got into fighting. Dude, probably a majority of fighters. Fighting. Majority of fighters are doing it for the chicks or just wanting to. I feel like majority of dudes do everything for chicks, like working yeah, out all this it, shit bro. is like Fuck. building some like confidence, so you're like, I can go do yeah. this. Yeah. And which is funny too, man. I love the shit you'll post like. After your fight, you're like, I'm here for like all the something and all oh, the pussy. Fucking, all Bro, the that shit is so Roy funny. Roy Jones to me. Jr., baby. <laughs> that's a quote. And all the pussy that come with it. Yeah, okay, the can't be touched song. Can't be touched. Yeah. Yo, it's just, it's funny, man. Like, your personality is really, like, really like that. Like, your socials yeah. show your personality. Yeah. In and a it's really, cool. Really Danny, my girl, she's just like, one of the first conversations I had with Danny when I met her was like, I don't get, I was 19, 20 years old. I'm like, I don't get him. A guy could just fuck one girl for the rest of her life. One of the she first, said that to no, you. No, I said that to her. Oh, you said that to her. It was like our, one of our first conversations we ever had. Like when we fell in love, she knew who she was falling in love with. Like it wasn't like I pretended to be this guy, and then it was like, hey, and then I switched up. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was, and, and I think that's why it works. But Danny allows me to be able to be myself. Like I don't have to really fake being anything. I mean, that's genuine love. Yeah, yeah. Like really is. It is deep. Like, at its it's core. deep love because being in an open relationship, going through certain things like. You uncomfortable talks, uncomfortable conversations, grow, it makes you grow a, a fuck ton. Have you ever had to experience her being with someone else? No, but I've I've ex- almost like she told me like I was fucking this one chick for a, a while like she knew and like she's like well I I want to fuck fuck someone and she wanted to fuck one of my buddies and I messaged him and said hey you know what kind of relationship we're in like if she hits you up like I'm not gonna be mad at you yeah. and, and nothing ever ended up happening but I got to the point. Or I felt those emotions and yeah. I was like, fuck, this would be hard, dude. But <laughs> I can't say, I can't, I would not say no. And I can't be mad at her or him or whatever. And it was, it was tough. It never ended up happening, but I got to a point mentally where I was okay with it, which was, it's a fucking crazy point. I never thought like my 16, 17, 18 year old self could ever even say that. Like be okay with that. Yeah. But it, it, it comes on insecurity dude. It's cool. You had Aubrey on the podcast cause yeah. we've learned oh, yeah. a lot from I him. I love that guy. At, at first I, I listened to his podcast probably six years ago. And I was like, Oh damn, there's a different way you can go about relationships. So we started reading books, listening to Esther Perel, listening, uh, reading the books, mastery of love and just learning about it and be like, yeah. damn, there's actually a different way you can do it. Yeah. Well, I think the thing comes down to like that the backbone of it is, how you said, like from jump, you're like, hey, this is who I am. Yep. This is this is where I'm at. This is what I, I want. I cheated on every girl I've ever been with. And I just, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I added that. And ever since I started to talk to girls in high school, it's like I was still talking to other girls. Like I of never course. was able to just talk to one girl. And the thing is, I think that's like literally most dudes. Yeah. I for the most part. Yeah. And I, I think there's a lot of girls too, honestly. Yeah. Like girls that aren't just fucking... I mean, they'll say they are because they want it to be like a, they don't want the guy to talk to other girls, but dude, girls are just as fucking horny as us. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. And it's like, name one 
marriage or one guy that you've just you've never heard him talk about another girl or you or around the boys and being around the boys and it's like okay i picked this girl to be my best friend my partner i want to be able to be myself around her and tell her whatever i, I want instead of having to be like oh, i'm this person with this girl but yeah it's the honesty man like i said from the be- from the beginning like as soon as you could introduce that in the same thing like when you when guys are going for girls like instead of like trying to like feed a girl what you know they want to hear. Steiny. <laughs> Steiny, yeah. Steiny, yeah. Uh, or like try her. to flex at the same time. But it is, it's the honesty, yeah. man, of like this is this is where I'm at. Because a lot of guys will play that role like trying to tell someone what they know they want to hear to get like the pussy or yeah. to, you know, to get the relationship. And eventually like it shit just goes to shit. Mm. It's just, it's crazy how we don't understand that like, I mean, we do, but a lot of people, they play that role because they think it's like the safe way or they've been taught that like, that's the norm that you have to, you have to have relationships this way. But like, where did you, where, so did you start thinking about this through Aubrey or was this yeah. like, yeah, through Aubrey's podcast, I was like, damn dude, there okay. literally is another, I didn't even know about like, like we don't put up like labels on it, but open relationships and polyamory. I'm like, damn, this is a real thing. Cause like my parents got divorced. Um, everyone's fucking parents got divorced. I'm like, there's gotta be a different way to go about it than just, there's two options. You be with this woman or you be a shitty person and cheat and lie. Like everyone usually does. Because you're right about that. Like how I'm trying to think of how many relationships I've heard where the guy is even for time for like years and never talks about another girl. It just doesn't exist. I don't know any couple really that's just happy and monogamous. That's just, I mean, I, I got, I couldn't name one. But okay. we started talking to our girls like similar times, like about it more in in like uh, when we started learning about that there was another way of relationships. It was we were kind of like doing talking to our girls at the same time. Yeah. So and I think that helped a lot too. Because they knew each other. Yeah, Danny yeah. and Mariah are really good friends, and like <clears throat> they talk, and they well, the thing that helped so much is that they le- they wanted to learn about it too. So they could understand how to deal with the, um, the emotions that came up. So yeah. they would listen to podcasts. They would read books. They would talk to each other. And, and that fucking helped a ton. The, the girls being able to talk to each other about everything. Yeah. Like, how do you think you, if you're a normal guy, listen to this, if you're like, how would you approach a girl? And like, even because <laughs> so tough, I would hate to have to go. Dude, restart. I, <laughs> I think you have to be super, super like in love and everything good between you guys. You guys have good sex. You guys have good communication. Um, and like, yeah, that's that's you have to have good communication and maybe watch porn with your partner once and then just kind of see what they're well, into and be able to just open up a little bit and be like, oh, yeah. okay, let's talk about this stuff a little bit. And may, so maybe br- maybe bring in a, a threesome and just like let's try some shit out, dude. Yeah. And it, but it's like he, like he said, it's not just like this easy thing. Like we de- we still have rules and it's just not like there's oh yeah, it's just all breezy. You have to go through tough conversations that most people want to avoid completely. Yeah. What 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 are the rules? Like what kind of rules? Wearing a condom what is one for me. Yeah, just throw one out there. You got to wear a condom. Like, yeah. right now, my our rule is, like, I can't fuck a chick more than once. So then, because then you're going to start building a relationship. Uh, and the girls need to know that I'm in a relationship. Yeah. That's nice, though. If you can tell a girl, like, hey, I got a girl. And then, it like, that makes it a lot easier. You don't want to lead someone on, too, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, this honesty in, in how you're going about anything. When I fuck a girl, they know I'm, I got a girl. And that yeah. fucks them up. They're like, wait, uh, wait, what? They, you're they're like, okay with it. You're like, I mean, yeah, and they're like, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, so I was hearing some stuff about this. Uh, this sleep, you do some crazy shit with your sleep. That's like the first time I started getting into sleeping was the Matthew Walker podcast with Joe Rogan, which was probably what five years ago, something like that. And it fucking complete. Like, my life is based around performance. You know 100%, what I mean? Yeah. Not right now. I, and I hate it's weird saying that right now because I'm out of camp and like I'm not training. I'm not on my shit. But I still have good routines, still good, uh, good sleeping habits. Um, but yeah, sleeping is the number one performance enhancer at a hundred percent. What what it, like? What do you do to cultivate? Like, just, what are you doing? Yeah, I got my sleep down so good. I I I think uh, for me, I hot tub, cold plunge every night. I got yeah, I got those over here. <sighs> so nice, yeah. dude. dude. Turn turning off electronics, like not just fucking on your phone Surfing. until you the fall, blue light asleep. Stuff. fall asleep. We have I have a chili chili pad that you can set at whatever temperature you want, and just having your room be made for sleep. Yeah, like you go in your room, and that's your time to fucking wind down and sleep. Sleep and a big thing too is caffeine. Like a lot of people will have caffeine has like a half life of eight hours. So if you have a yeah. you know four hundred or 200 milligrams of caffeine at fucking 2 p.m. in yeah. eight hours you're still gonna have half half that caffeine running through your body so yeah well i'll do i that that helps a ton i'm very sensitive to that caffeine Me too. i have my coffee in the morning and i won't do caffeine past noon 
Like, yeah, I'm the I, same I exact do way. It. I'll be up all night. I am so sensitive to caffeine. Like if I, and I can't even have more than like 300 a day. Whew, yeah. But it's like for me, yeah, I, I've noticed that if I drink caffeine anywhere around like two, three, four, five o'clock, I'm having a hard time sleeping for sure. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Like a lot of people don't even know that. Like, that I'm that's anxious. Happening. They're sipping a fucking Red Bull at 9 p.m. Yeah, surfing. Was, I'm anxious. I was talking to uh, Isaiah, one of the guys who lives in my house, and he was talking about how he has been having a hard time sleeping. And I was like, when's the last time you had caffeine? Like, how often do you have caffeine? He's like, oh, I just had a cup. It was like 6 o'clock at night. He had a whole cup of coffee. I'm like, dude, this is like... Because those people don't realize that caffeine is, is competing for the same receptors as the the, the things that are going to help you fall asleep. Mm-hmm. And they're going to hold on to those things because they're stronger and they're not going to allow the sleep, the serotonin, the melatonin to be produced. So it's like, yeah. people don't realize that. But what do you notice when like your sleep's really good versus not good? Like, does dude, it completely... Mental, like anxiety, depression, none of that. I feel way more clear headed and I can find peace a lot easier when I'm sleeping good. If I'm not sleeping good, like these last two nights I haven't slept good. I, I just feel like I'm like, fuck. And I drank alcohol, which is fucking poison. Um, what about food? How does food relate to your sleep? Food, dude, eating too close to bed, stuffing your face, eating too much sugar before bed. <clears throat> like I've gotten down, I've been, I'm able to like have a little dark pe- uh, piece of dark chocolate, peanut butter for a dessert. It's a perfect little sweet tooth tops you off. Um, especially in fight camp, dude, I'll eat around seven, seven thirty, and I won't go to bed with a full stomach. I'm not trying to digest my food while I'm sleeping. And I think that plays a huge role in how you who, sleep. Who's helped you with your like nutrition stuff? Uh, I have a guy named Dan Garner okay. who, uh, I mean, I, I do, I send, I get blood tests done. He looks over all my stuff, stool, fucking piss, saliva. How often do you get your blood work done? Um, a couple times a year. So I, yeah. I'm going to do it. I did one before I left. Uh, he said it takes about three, four weeks. He'll write up a diet <clears throat> for out of camp right now. Cause I'm out of camp. We'll do an out of camp diet for however long until I get back into camp. Then we'll switch it up to in camp diet. Um, but that, that, <clears throat> that's huge with inflammation. Like when I'm in training camp and I'm eating perfect outside of training camp, I don't eat perfect. I don't eat right, shit, but right. I don't eat perfect inside of training camp. Dude, I feel like a fucking machine. If I'm eating my diet, eating the right stuff, not eating stuff that's causing inflammation to my muscles in my body it, I, I i feel like a fucking machine so when you when you say like a machine is it just like you just feel sharper recover faster, faster. Like, i can yeah I, I get more out of my training sessions i recover faster you know mentally i just i feel really good i don't have brain fog yeah um, sharp I, I feel sharp yeah do you, you have any like meditation type practices that you do yeah heavily because i've been seeing on twitter and stuff like <clears throat> having all this social media and having all this like uh being a youtuber and having all this pressure to constantly put out content and constantly up it it's gotta come with some shit oh yeah. bro it's fucking it's <laughs> like if i didn't do stuff like that i think i would lost my mind Me, by now because it's this same. constant need for more constant need for what's next constant yeah. need for doing something better than before and i've been doing this shit for like 10 years yeah OG. not youtube but like instagram forever like mm-hmm. since 2011 so yeah, there's this constant pressure for more. Um, I started getting into meditation probably about like three years ago and like, I've only gotten better at it cause I've like done it more. The thing I realized like first is I shouldn't only meditate when like I'm feeling anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it, it was normally, it was like a reaction where it's like, if I'm feeling it, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and meditate mm-hmm. now versus meditating like when I'm completely calm and like garnering that ability to like find that center, right. Mm -hmm. To find that like relaxation Mm -hmm. without having to like, I'm trying to fix what's this problem that's happening right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So It seems like when you're not consistent with it, like consistent, like everything is like, fuck dude. Yeah. It's like, everything is like that though. Like if you're not consistent in communication, if you're not consistent in like your training, your diet, like it's everything just is, is fluid. Yeah. So the more that I stay on it, the more that I just feel just better as a The more a you get human. out of it. <clears throat> yeah, the more I get out of it as well. I do. I, I start my mornings with it. It's so fucking important for me. I can I can I really tell if I don't meditate throughout the day. How, like many, the how many years has it been? for? Like, well, when, when whenever you broke your jaw, you kind of like started getting into it. And you're like, dude, like this is actually pretty fucking sweet. How many years ago was that? Was that four years ago now? Yeah, four like or five years ago? That was and when been... Connor fought Floyd. It was that day. That, or that was what they you Holy broke shit, man. But that was that long ago? Connor <laughs> fought Floyd. What? Yeah, I don't like know that. if that was that long ago. Four, four years ago, because I was living with Can you Google his that? Dad, dad and stuff. So it was, yeah, it was a while. It was a, while a long time ago. ago. Yeah. So you do it every morning, dude. I do. I I even I I don't I didn't do it a couple mornings ago because I went to bed at eight. But I did it this morning, just like ten minutes, kick my feet up against the wall, and just 
it wasn't a it wasn't like a great session to where I was just calm. My mind was just fucking. What, what's your process? Like, how do you I, start? I, it? I, I do an app, a um, couple different apps. This one, like this morning, I did ten percent. They have a like a morning selection you can choose from. I just click on one of those ten minutes and headphones fucking, on. Uh, I didn't have headphones on this yeah. morning, but it was uh that that does help when it's just yeah. fucking in your ears. But I mean, even even yeah, even like, I can I can definitely tell if I don't. Dude, reading day. that Tim Ferriss, the Tools of Titans book, and all those powerful people, just every single one of them talking about how important it is and how much it changed them, yeah. their lives. I can't imagine in LA like all these YouTubers. Like you're a healthy guy and you're like a smarter guy, but some of these guys that have this unhealthy lifestyle, it's like God, they have to be fucking going crazy in their head. Yeah, especially with like the drinking and the partying and all that. That being like a part of the stuff that like maybe they feel like they have to do. I think right. the, the blessing that I've had is that like I've been so focused my whole career physically they're like i've got to the mental aspect of it sooner but it is so real like working on your mental is just as important as working on your physical like if someone's Probably like more, i want it right yeah if not way more mm -hmm. but it's like i've got into it because like you know those things those paths kind of cross mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened to us really yeah mm -hmm. but i i just don't think people realize how important it is because like meditating still sounds just like even when i talk about it people listening are like Hippie shit. Yeah. yeah. Hippie Still shit. sounds like hippie shit, but it's like, yeah. dude, this is, if you're watching this podcast and you're into working out, if you watch any of my stuff, you're into working out, your mind game is 10 times, if not like a thousand times more important than your physical. Because the thing that, that pushes your, your physical is your mind. Yeah. And if your mind's not there, it's not thinking like you're talking about your clarity, all this stuff that happens to you when you're, when you're focused on your sleeping and mm -hmm. your food. So now you're able to get in the ring and like be sharp as fuck. And that guy feels like slow motion mm, yeah. and you feel like lightning quick. It's because you've done all that practice. Yeah. And I think people get so focused on, okay, I'm just going to, I got to train. Obviously you need to train. You need to learn the techniques, the jujitsu stuff, mm -hmm. the striking stuff. That's all. It's all kind of equally as important, but yeah. like it's coming from here. Yeah. Dude, and, and when you're, especially with him, like he's got a lot of pressure on him and being in an arena packed with 25,000 people, this last fight having a fucking rib injury, there's a lot of things your mind can start focusing on. But being able to be present in the ring, feeling his feet in the cage and just being able to let it go is a big reason why he's- Yeah, so like I, I'm curious because like you definitely have more popularity than like probably all the fighters in the UFC right now. Yeah. I, I mean, just straight up, just from what I see from the outside. Yeah. Besides, like, maybe they're, if they're talking about, like, I mean, even still, no, you do. Even, even like, the top five. Yeah. I, like, I, I think I'm up there top three right now. Like, as far as popularity goes, and in, in not hardcore fans, but just, like, random people. But like People oh, know people who guy. know yeah. you. Yeah. So, like, when you get, you must have, like, like, when you're walking out, are you just, like, super, like, this is mine? Or are you, like. I'm, I'm, I'm. A lot of it's kind of a mantra, just like mantra, too sharp, too fast, too focused, it's like saying that over and over. Do you and repeat over. this to yourself? Just in my head or I'll say it out loud. Like when I was walking out, obviously I was coming out to the new six, nine, like that song, I was kind of singing it to myself, whatever. But I think mantra is very important. Mantra and just like following my breath in the, in the back cage before, or in the backstage before I go out and fight, I'm in like such a deep meditative state. Like usually I can't even get to that kind of state if I sat and meditated for 10 minutes. Usually like I'm, I, I, I'm meditating basically the whole time in the back. Is it, is it, is it, it's not anger. I don't fight angry. I'm so calm, dude. It's like, it's fucking weird. Like I'm just. Dude, elite, elite people, you can't fight with emotions. Yeah. You just yeah. can't. It's just too tactical. I want people to get emotional when I yeah. fight, when yeah. they fight me. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of. Cause you then want, you, you use more energy. You're like. They're slower. If they're fucking like, I want to hit this guy. It's like, they're even a little bit slower than they feel already. Like, um. So yeah, if if I can get them emotional with me staying calm, it's that's superb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that's in, so in the trippy, back, man. In the back, I'm just like breathing and fucking. It's just like a, such a calm feeling back there. But it's funny because like uh, Juliana Pena was in the back with us, and like her emotion and energy is so much different. Everyone's different, but hers was like like an anxiety. Like I just want to go in there and get this over with. Yeah, that's but, um, the girl who beat Nunez, right? Yeah. Yeah, and she which, went out there and performed too. So that was fucking, a fucking crazy fight, bro. bro. I, like, I still haven't got to watch it, but the fact that she finished her it was fucking crazy. Like, she, she's from kind of like um, the northwest from us, and she's always comes fucking game, dude. She's gonna make you fight regardless. But for someone like her, her style maybe like emotion plays into it a little bit. She's not super technical. She's just kind of a scrappy brawler, good re like a good wrestler. So, and he's super technical. His eyes are open, super technical, waiting for this dude to make a mistake, waiting for him to overcommit. So maybe for, I think some yeah. people emotions might be good, but I think for the really elite guys, I don't think it's good. Yeah. Like w when you're fighting, are, are you, are you more reactive? Um, 
Like you more I'm like a, I'm, I'm reactive. I'm like offense, defense, all the whole time. Like yeah. I'm, my offense is trying to get them to throw so I can counter. But also, if they don't throw, I can still be very uh, effective without them. So I can fight going backwards or forward. Which is do you have a favorite fucking punch or favorite move? Or I just, just something always I feels feel like good. I'm just dancing in there, dude. I feel like just performing in general is just the best. How did you guys meet? Uh, Tinder, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, gr- grinder. Uh, uh, I, I, I was uh, fighting in Bellator at the time, and I went to Great Falls, Montana, where I'm from. Yeah, uh, to commentate some local fights, and I, and I was watching him fight when he was 16. I was kind of keeping my eye on him. I'm like, oh, this kid's pretty sparky, but he doesn't know how to work hard. But then I went there. That's what he thought. Saw him submit yeah. like a, a college wrestler from his back, and I knew he trained at a gym that didn't. You submitted a college wrestler. Yeah. Okay. When I was 18, like I knew literally a one. Tr- I knew an arm bar off my back, and this fucking I arm barred this kid, the one he was at. Yeah. And then yeah, and then after the fight, I said, hey, you want to come down to Phoenix and and train with me at like a real gym and just see how you do, and little crazy fucker he's just like yeah 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 yeah. he's calling me i'm like yeah whatever so then came down for a week got beat up bad and ended up leaving i'm like i bet we won't see him i ended up leaving just because my flight like i i came down for 10 days dude after every session i was like what the fuck because i thought i was the man i came down to phoenix and this is in wrestling this wasn't just mma at the uh, mma lab is like a high level gym so you guys are striking and and grappling yeah yeah we're a bunch of pro pros there's guys in ufc already like at the gym guys in bellator so i came down from montana thinking i was the shit and realized very quickly, first day, I was not at the sixteen. Shit. I was eighteen at 18, that time okay. um, when I flew down and checked it out for the first time. But then I flew back, flew back home, saved up two thousand dollars, got my fucking two thousand six Nissan Altima, and drove down. Never lived without my like away from my parents. Yeah, and uh, we got an apartment and fucking. It's been grinding. I haven't so lost just since. the time time uh-huh. periods now, so everyone listening knows in case they don't. How old are you right now? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah, I've been so I've been training for eleven years. Damn. What, so what do you, what do you, cause you guys have been, he's been coaching you for how many years? Well, he was, when I moved to the lab, he was still fighting. He was in Bellator. He was still fighting. But every time I had a fight coming up, he would go there with me. He would hold mids. He'd kind of turn from fighter to coach for those last couple of weeks. Yeah. And then, uh, it's like I started getting a bunch of surgeries. Like I tore this bicep completely before my ultimate fighter fight. And then, uh, like as soon as this one healed, I fucking tore this one up my bicep. Like how rare is that? Doing what? Punching people, dude, oh, fuck. and just like ripping my fucking arms, and then um, and then after that healed up, I had my fight and I broke my jaw, Oof. broke my jaw completely. So then I just started reading a lot, getting into meditation, like learning about Tim Ferriss, learning a lot of podcasts, and then I just started focus on helping Sugar a lot more. Yeah. And then what what do you think that what do you think that he does for you the most? Um, as a coach, well, that's a. So it's a it's an open ended question for sure, yeah. but something that you like you could identify like the thing that maybe he helps you with the most or yeah. Well, I think we train training together. Like he knows he knows my striking, he knows my setups, he knows the combos I like to throw more than anyone. We've been hitting mitts for fucking seven years together. He's watched a lot of my sparring. Obviously, watched all, is that all my fights, but we grapple together too. He's not he he feels what I'm capable of. And what I'm not as good at. He knows where to help me <clears throat> more than a coach that doesn't really train with me. That You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we grapple together. Yeah. We go live, go live rounds. And uh, so that's very How helpful. much you weigh? Uh, 190, 95. And you're but, but, yeah, I'm 155. I, and I th- when we have competition training, there's, there's a, fu- a bunch of guys at the gym. So you train with a bunch of different body types. Yeah. If I'm in tr- ca- training camp for a fight, usually I'll kind of stick around guys my weight and stuff. And, uh, but... When, when we're doing jiu-jitsu competition training, like, you go to a room, it's a bunch of different body types, yeah. body styles. And I think, I think though, a lot what helped us, too, is just we both started reading books at the same time mm-hmm. and really reading and then sharing a book with him, sharing a book, and then sending articles and just constantly trying to improve. Like, especially in MMA, there's just so much to improve at. You can improve at wrestling, improve your jiu-jitsu, improve your boxing, diet. improve your Muay Thai, improve your diet, improve your recovery. There's just so much. So we're just constantly... It's... Fighting's been our passion for the last 10 years, so it hasn't been hard to do that, you know what I mean? And constantly yeah. improving and bouncing it back and forth, I think it's helped a lot. Do you, do you think fighters, and this probably sounds like a dumb question to you guys, and maybe to people listening, being smarter makes you a better fighter? Ooh, that's a good question. I think... I think yes. Dude, 100%. Especially, some people are so stupid, they're just still like... 
I guess they're not going to be the elite elite though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Name elite top five. That's what guy. I'm talking about, yeah. right? A top five guy that's not very smart. There's just not that many. There used to be in previous yeah. years, but now it's just the, the game's changing so much. Everyone's but still, dude, some people train over train way too much, and it's a mental thing. Like, uh, uh, I heard it takes confidence to take a day off. I feel like I've got training camps dialed in to where I used to be doing say twelve practices a week. Yeah. Now I'm doing like seven or eight and it's like those ones that I'm not doing are just as important as the ones I am doing. Yeah. And that's, that's something I've, I've really gotten good at is just dialing in training camps and fucking, and, uh, knowing when it's, to take time It's off. interesting. I mean, it's the same thing in like bodybuilding is like knowing when to like pump the brakes a little bit, mm-hmm. when to like switch up your, you're not necessarily switch it up, but you need rest just as much as you need action. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people don't recognize that or understand that. And like, I think probably a lot of people when they first get into MMA or any sort of fighting, like they just more and more and more. That's what, and, and, I, and I almost think you have to when you first start out. <clears throat> it's like you got a lot of time to catch up. You want to be good. You want to just be in the gym all the fucking time. And it's like, I mean, there is some benefit to that. Is like establishing a good work ethic and being at the gym probably too much. But once you get to a certain level, you'll be like, okay, now yeah. it's, yeah, I think the last two years, a big part of his success is this coach that we have. He trains me too. His name's Brandon Harris. Like he he doesn't just beat you down. All right, we're deadlifting day. We're just gonna kill you today. Oh, this we is got, a physical. Yeah, yeah, our strength okay. conditioning got coach. It. And he's he's a, he's a, um, big on meditation too. He's just been a good fucking mentor to us. And a sugar's like a fucking like a Ferrari, and he gets injured easy but brandon's helped us a lot that's so funny because it's like a ferrari yeah 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 <laughs> no i haven't been getting injured nearly as much since i started working with him though but because i started lifting yeah like, i never lifted until i met him and, and then i started lifting not just lifting but lifting correct not fucking has that made a big difference in your dude, fights made me, i feel like i'm stronger faster more durable it, yeah. it, it's been huge it's, i like it. folk they're not focused on oh. like like the physical training not not obviously like jujitsu and all that and striking but like sports performance, like yeah. weightlifting. Yeah. I feel like they don't focus on that. And I do it. I mean, I, and I think some people don't, and then some people too much. Like, yeah. th- there's definitely like a sweet spot to where I'm I, I'm doing it like two, three times a week. Do you deadlift? Uh, yeah, we'll deadlift. Do you squat? Don't really squat much. Don't squat much. No. And what other performance exercises do you do? do a you lot like of cleans? ISOs, like le- like ISO ISOs with. Uh, um, I'm super curious in this. Yeah, I fucking dude. The thing is so nice about that. Is I don't have to, I don't have to think about it. I go there and I trust him that Just he's run gonna build, it. that he's gonna because dude he thinks a, he thinks very deep into my training camps and outside my training camps and what he has blocks like we're gonna build this 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 and I just can trust him and I don't have to fucking think about what we're doing. Yeah, I don't have to because that's not what I'm, I'm thinking about jujitsu. I'm thinking about striking. I'm thinking about chicks. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> and he and he lives it too. You, when you're in Phoenix, you should come train with us one time. I will. Yeah. I will. I want to fucking spar you. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's got to be. He a ten, goes. Okay. It's got to be a ten yeah. minute round. Yeah. No. Ten fuck minutes. no. Ten <laughs> minutes. It's like thirty. Seconds. No, I'll be done in like fucking four, dude. Oh. I love how you go. Okay. okay. <laughs> I got. Well, I, don't, I used to have a cage in my garage. I just took it down. But uh, how fast do you think you beat me in a fight? Like two minutes. Depends on what is your car. Dude, I don't know. You're a you're a big motherfucker. Big motherfucker. I don't even. I don't think I've grappled tank. grappled someone as big as you, dude. So you funny, man. No, Hulk's not but even. I feel like I would just close. be getting tagged up. I'd come in, I'd just be getting tagged. Like, <laughs> yeah. at least I hit at least like four times before I get my hands on you. Yeah. Well, the body shots is probably what would add up. I'd have like, to kick Ooh. you in the stomach a lot. Fucking, <laughs> Shit would suck, dude. How tall are you? So six three. Six three. Fuck, yeah, I mean, dude. fuck. I think two sixty right now. Whew. That's a different kind of. Power. Yeah, I mean a heavyweight. I'm a heavyweight. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So that. it'd be like I'm a fucking full on heavyweight. Have you yeah. ever like sparred or worked with heavyweights? Um, kind of just fucking around, but for the most part, like that's how you get injured. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, if I, ideally I stay around my weight when it comes to sparring, like actually hitting each other. You you kind of just. You want to spar with your guys your size. Like when it comes to just grappling jujitsu, you can spar with bigger guys. Like Tim and I can roll because we're not. I'm not gonna get hurt. Yeah, Definitely there's no like. Have, but, yeah, you know. I guess you could like overexert. You jumping in here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He he personally requested you. He said, "Where's your?" That's what I heard. My little yeah. brother. Oh my god, he's fangirling right really? now. Really? Yeah. yeah. I was That's like, funny. "Do you know who Sugar Sean O'Malley?" Is? Yeah, you could tell your little like, brother oh that god. that he wants to have sex with you. What? I didn't. He know. wants to have sex with my brother? No, with you. He wants to have. He said that. That's what he said. He said you want to have sex with me. What re- what's the reason? He's nervous now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, so say- he looked at you like fuck. <sighs> you did say that. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm right I, here, so 
Well, it's not going to happen right now. Hold on. I said oh. something similar to that. Yes, I did. It's what, similar. What was the exact wording and the thought process I think, behind uh, it? Were we live when it happened? I think we were live, yeah. Okay. You can go watch the replay. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, we replay. might have been FaceTiming you. It doesn't opinion. matter. Okay, sounds good. Yes. So, so what you do watch you... the podcast before yes. then? Yeah. Oh, good. So I like your fan. outfit. Thank you. I just got out of bed. I put it on just for you. Oh, thank you. I was going to come in my pajamas, but I thought I'd impress you. That would have worked. Oh. I noticed you didn't wear the heels today. I didn't wear the heels today, no. Yeah, I got I'm a lot a little... of shit for them from Bryce. It hurt my feelings. Oh, it's okay. It made me feel bad. I it's almost okay. showed the toes, though. Ooh. Yeah. Are you, are you, well, you like toga. You no, a toga? No. I'm not. I'm Do you just... like toes? Fuck no. Let's... You missed it. We were talking yeah. We were talking about um, they they both have open relationships with their girls. No, I don't. Really? <laughs> like, no. Full on. Single. Wow. Yeah. yeah. God you bless it. her. Yeah. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever considered doing that, or would you ever do something like that? Absolutely not. Yeah. No. How come? Um, because I'm the type, kind of person that I, I know it sounds bad, but like I just I need that like possessive factor. I want them oh. to only want to be with me. That's yeah. Uh, you, good luck finding that. Exactly. Yeah, it hasn't worked out well <laughs> How old are you? so far. Twenty two. Twenty two. You never know. You can find a good Christian boy that'll. That's what that's I'm like really good at lying. Yeah. Maybe a virgin. Just that's it. really good at lying. <laughs> no, just I only want to be with you. Yeah. Exactly. And trust me, I know it's like unrealistic. It's not something that's probably going to happen or something that happens naturally, but. You never know. You know, my ideal. But what makes you want to be in an open relationship? Just, that's just too, I just, I don't know. Is it, be, is it being an alpha male? Is it just. I am. An, I guess we are alpha males. I mean. You, def, you definitely are. I mean, okay. you fight people for a living. Which I think is so cool, by the way. Like, that concept. Do, do you it's ever crazy, trip on that? Though. That like. It's trippy. You're literally, like, the, you're obviously without the death. You're like a gladiator. They pay yeah. people. Like, you're literally in a ring and people are watching you fight another man. Like, to. Yeah. Whoever wins, it is that crazy, is the coolest shit I feel like I'm ever. more of a lover than a fighter. Like I never really pick, think of myself as a fighter. Yeah, it's more athletic. I'm just like it's, it's a competition for me. It's yeah. like it's just like any other. I yeah, but you're like physically like, beating someone. Yeah. Up. <laughs> like and I, and I know I what you're saying. When I knock I, someone out, I act genuinely like have like a feeling like I feel bad because I know what concussion. I've had concussions. Yeah, like, they fuck you up. You can get brain damage from that. So I genuinely feel bad after I fuck someone up. Yeah. But it's, oh God, it's so cool to me. It's Have you like ever scene. hurt somebody, like genuinely really hurt somebody? Like long lasting damage. <laughs> Probably. I mean, that's I the thing. Like there's all this stuff out. now, like the CTE shit, like people getting like actual brain. That like, yes. hair like, kid, like fucking hit him in the head. Like, yeah, times. that fight I was watching, I was like, I was also shocked how many punches that kid could take. That's like his head. Serious brain damage. Like, no, seriously. You, you probably didn't see this fight, but this guy got hit like. 200 times. I, yeah, like literally. I'm watching the fight like just end this shit. Oh my god! You know, but I was. And also he was just getting like beat the fuck up. I, at some point, don't they call it? Well, yeah. Yes, but I'm telling you, it was literally like I know everyone in the room where I watch were like, "Yo, I, I." We're also just shocked that he's not getting knocked out. We're like, this guy's head is made of steel because he just kept taking yeah. punches. He was Shout just out walking into punches. He Shout got, out! He got very popular from that. No, I. But I. It's like part of me was like, "Who's this guy?" I wanted to find yeah. him because he got hit so Dude, much. He went and, from like three thousand followers to one hundred thirty thousand. So like, th okay, so this is kind of what I want to talk about now. This is obviously not the same exact thing, but I, you mentioned this on a podcast. This whole Dana White, Jake Paul, paying fighters more, all this stuff, and I kind of heard your response. What do you think about that? Because what you just said, right? You're a very, very popular fighter, extremely popular fighter, right? Not every single fighter in the UFC is Sugar Sean. Yeah. They're, they, it just, I'm not saying these people are not as valuable as individuals or as fighters, but as like on the, on the grand scale, if we're talking about money in yeah. and money out, right? Yeah. Because so many more people are engaged with you and know you on this social presence and like they're going to come to your fight. They're going to pay for your stuff. They're going to they're gonna buy into you because they like, they're, they're excited about it. There's not many, if we talked about earlier, who's the most popular fighters, there's yeah. not many who are like pulling that. I have... Yeah, UFC's very good at getting you into like a big contract, six, seven fights. So I, you know, I blow up after three fights, but I'm still four fights left to fight out the contract that I'm on right, right. now to get paid. I have two more fights on this contract that I'm on right now. I'm not on a bad. It's not horrible. Yeah. It depend like I mean, if you compare it to Jake Paul, like it, it is horrible. Right. But if you compare it to the UFC, like it could, you know, it's. I feel like a I, I, and I, and Dana White went on record after my last fight saying we're we're gonna pay him. Of course, which is rare. You don't ever hear Dana saying that. Like of you course, don't, you don't hear him. Saying I feel that. like we've all like I feel it's so I, I don't even want to make this about this, but I feel like Steve was like fucking totally rooting for you too. Oh yeah, yeah. Steve. Wants but but to it's also paid. just like, dude, you're fucking popular. Yeah. And this is the thing when when I when I remember Jake put out this like pay the UFC fighters like fifty percent of this, and it's mm -hmm. like billion, it's like, dude, what about the 
years and years and years of Dana and that entire team and that organization built the UFC to build that platform yeah. for him to say, oh, you should just give this away because he's trying to make a point about this, like, yeah. you know, this social clout and right. at the same time looking like a good guy being like, give more money to the fighters. And like, I respect that. But at the same time, like, it's all, it was all self-serving. All that's right. self-serving for Jake to say that. Yeah. Everything we do is selfish. Yeah. And it is what it is. I'm not mad at him. Jake's a very smart guy. Yeah. But at the same time, to shoot that shot at Dana is like, dude, it's a fighter who just comes in right now. How would they be entitled to that much money when they're they're not adding as much to the UFC 100%. that the UFC is adding to them? Dude, 100 percent. Like that. Yeah. With. There's some people that aren't going to make... They'll get paid 10 and 10, say they win, they get 20,000. Like, the UFC didn't make that on them. I mean, they're still getting it, but I, it, it fighting so fucked up that it is crazy that you're fighting for such little money. When you say little money, what do you... Like, how much are we talking here? For one fight, for someone like you, in, like, in starting out, how much are they paying you? Or are they, or are they not paying you at like all? I have, eight fights in the UFC, or something like that. Yeah. I made a couple hundred thousand out to, uh, from my last fight. Okay. And I believe I'm worth... A million, hundred percent, like, like per fight. I would like, bro. You're be, popping, but like. that's. I, I'm not even gonna get that next contract, probably. Like that's just how the UFC works. If yeah. I'm the champ, then it, it's different. But I'm not. I'm the people's champ, but that doesn't pay you the same. But yeah, so I mean, like this year, I fought three times, three KOs, three bonuses. Didn't make a million from yeah. fighting. Yeah, they don't bring into like they don't like. Oh, let's look at his Instagram and decide how much we're gonna pay him. I was gonna ask that. Social media doesn't really no. play into not, it. Not really. It's, I think like when I go to negotiate, it might a little bit now. Like, yeah. Hey, this is how much I you know make Burt's Twitch. Yeah. All this other shit like it might, but UFC is very smart and they know, like they don't need me. I yeah. fucking disappear. UFC's billion dollar company without me. Like, yeah. They really fucking. Don't and that's the me. point, right? That's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. Like I totally understand. You know, paying the fighters more like when they when they deserve it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that they're they should just be throwing themselves out there and getting no money, but it's like this platform's also massive and it's been massive for time. Yeah, and they've given me the platform obviously to venture out into being able to sell merch. Like no one would know who the fuck I am if I'm not in the UFC knocking people out. I right. could, I wouldn't be able to sell merch, fuck do all this other stuff. That's what so, I'm saying. There's like the give and take and yeah. you you have been you know, blessed and you know, lucky enough to know how to do the other side of it. Yeah. And I think it's just because it's just who you are, though. It's like your personality. I think if you weren't a UFC fighter and you were still yourself, somehow you'd be popping on the internet. TikToker. Yeah, because like you did <laughs> hey, a funny, but it's also fighting related. But I do TikTok. You do? Yeah, but I haven't I'm not seen any consistent. of your TikToks. You I, haven't? Never. Uh, he always fucks with Bob. I've never seen one of your TikToks. My, my best one's my weatherman one, but I'll have to look it up. No, no I'm not, curious. Not, no, his socials dope. I have yeah, to, I have. I haven't seen. He's any funny. Of your He's entertaining. I wonder, like. In, if in UFC, like, do you have to have a social media presence to be like the level of success yes. that most people want? So yes. you you couldn't do it without any social media. I, I don't think so. I, don't, I couldn't name anyone that's well. Successful I think based on the same one. conversation, I think if you didn't have that, you would probably have a hard time making enough money to to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because like I know you you get you get your deals. Like I don't know the companies that you're working with. I've seen them. Um, the you know the the weed stuff, whatever yeah. the other stuff you're doing, but like you wouldn't be able to. I think sustain maybe I don't know if your lifestyle how have you built it if you didn't have those other things right yeah I mean I, I, I do live pretty simple like my my lifestyle back home is very simple like I'm not really sp I, I invest money I have a house I have two like a couple houses like my all my shits paid off. My yeah. house are almost paid off, so I'm, I don't spend money. It's just funny as you say this, but you got the the. I the know, I'm like but no, at no, no, but, but that was a gift. <laughs> Steve gave from me that. Steve, huh? Steve, Steve gave me that gift. Steve. But it's so funny. Steve gave you one of those chains too, yeah, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. So, like, so are you a Nelk boy? No, I'm a sender. <laughs> he sends it. I sent it. Well, you're a sender. Do you feel like confident saying that out loud that you're a sender? I sent it. Oh, he fully <laughs> like that's what he does. I sent it, whatever night. I sent. It. I don't even. Yeah, Sunday, Friday, whatever. What are you referring to? What do you mean? I sent it. You know. How so? Where were you? What'd you do? That's the, if I knew that. Who'd I, you do? If I if I knew that, I wouldn't have been. A, I wouldn't be a sender. Oh, I, okay. no, I didn't black out, but I I had fun. Friday. I'm not a sender. I don't I don't drink alcohol, so. I don't think I, I don't I tend send, to like drink you guys. very much alcohol. You I take didn't... Molly? Have you ever taken Molly? I took Molly one time. Um, in a, in Did my you have sex on Molly? I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't because I good. heard it would ruin it for the rest of my it life. Does. And I it, couldn't do it. I wouldn't say it ruins it for the rest of your life, but it, like the next couple of days, like your your dopamine levels are like shot. Yeah, I definitely just, wanted like, to die depressed. after. But, it's like, but even I worse, probably, if you have sex on Molly. Have you had sex on Molly? Yeah, once. You've done Molly? Yeah, when I was 22. 
Hey, literally your age like yeah <laughs> no if people don't know like brad's not a drug addict i straight thought brad was a cocaine addict i thought he really? railed really? fucking yeah. lines when i first met him That's i was crazy. like lines this dude is a cokehead because he's because constantly I'm... no because you have lockjaw when you're thinking so you like oh this. yeah yeah. and yeah. i'm like dude he's coked out right now like at really the gym. that's crazy <laughs> never but no he's not he's just i've a done psychopath. cocaine <laughs> once yeah no i'm a full-on yeah. psychopath did you like it cocaine mm-hmm Cocaine. Uh, I used to sell it. I used to literally sell cocaine. I, I kind of liked it. <laughs> I mean, I liked it. Yeah, not really. Like, I liked it for a second. Then I was like, oh, this is too much. Because, like, you were talking earlier, I'm too sensitive to, like, upper I'm stimulus. I'm very sensitive, too. So, anytime it's like that, I'm like, oh, this is a little too much. I get a little Let's bit go to the gym and fucking live. Yeah. Well, you I was on like, Adderall would not be good. Yeah, I just think of Jacob whenever I think about Adderall. That's he hit him. Jacob likes He shotguns bang. Yo, he's a psychopath. Oh, <laughs> that guy's a yeah. real psychopath. Shotguns bang? He does. 300 milligram caffeine. Yep. Fucking that fool doesn't give a shit, man. Damn. <laughs> he doesn't I care. I 600 milli or 60 milligrams of Adderall and brought my bang here today. So I what changed Jacob my uh, You're a Solstice drug addict. Oh. Holy yeah. shit. I have extreme ADHD. Extreme. Wow. Oh. And the caffeine helps? Does it make yeah. it worse? No, like, like I like that on feeling. I like feeling like I'm. But a don't crack. you have like that down Ooh. feeling after no, that? You no, you just keep railing bangs. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> a lot of people your age in LA, Adderall's big. Huh? Yeah, and like I, I, especially with like my job and like when I was in college. Oh my god. Fuck. Like I had to. I couldn't go to work and like focus on what I'm doing unless I. Took Isn't it. Adderall Dang. meth? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. It, it's yeah. literally like meth. Word it's a different it. derivative of it. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, but it's. Definitely. Oof, that's it's crazy. I was just so much more socially acceptable. Is that in the store exactly. or whatever, doctor? When you're hitting Adderall all the time, when does the decline start to come? When does it does it ever? I'm so yeah. I'm actually up? curious. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've never asked it, him this. It does. Like does um, it? I haven't noticed it like in like my mood or like energy, but like I will get depressed if I take it too long for too long like from long period of time yeah. i will get depressed and i will overthink and i'll get anxiety and i can feel it in my chest but at like, what period like five days on yeah probably like five days but i don't take at, it on the weekends okay so if you're doing it for 10 but years like, every day yeah i could, I could see that being a problem yeah. <laughs> I could definitely also i think if you don't have adhd it will definitely fuck you up you can get parkinson's disease damn so from that's it bad yeah so would you fuck sean Mm, is your dick big? <laughs> Yo, oh my god, Jesus! Wait a minute! Don't answer this right now. I mean, um, you can answer absolutely whatever you want. Absolutely, answer the question. I mean, I don't know if he, that's like you put him on the spot. You oh know? my god, Brad, is your dick big? Yes. Okay, well, I haven't seen it, but I'm assuming. Whatever. <laughs> is your dick big? Just tell her, sugar. Tell her you got a schlong on you. Look at him. Look at him. Tell her you got a schlong on you. You definitely give off. I have a slanging cock. Like you give off <laughs> giant dick energy. Uh, Yo, it's so stereotypical. Like skinny white guy with the tattoos. I love Colored it. hair. Tattoos, you're big. Got, he got big hands too. Look. And I, I and like this shows you know where the clitoris is too. Like wait 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 wait. Well, how does what show where the clitoris is? Wait wait. Explain to me. I don't know the whole vibe that I'm looking at right here. Okay. It shows like he knows what foreplay is. Because because of the watch in the ring. And it's more like like his fingers are clean, but he's like the skinny white guy skater type with colored hair that just means like i like to suck on clitorises that's oh, what that means my god that's a good oh, read wow. that was a good is that really a good read? read that was a good fucking read thank you wow that was thank impressive you. brad does not like foreplay brad okay, wants to go what, what inside we, your vagina we, right now i'm trying to go in the mouth first but, yes you know, that's anyways true. That was but so what was the answer i'm waiting no your answer my answer to fucking him? Yeah. If his dick is big. Yes. Oh my god. I love it. <laughs> well, you guys do that. We'll, I we'll find a little yeah, 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 we'll yeah, find yeah. a little tug shop. Like, waste yeah, it. tuggy. There's like two tuggies down is there here. Really? There are. There's a tuggy. What? You know what, you know what tuggies are? Tuggy. A hand job? Little oh. massage. Oh, like a massage. Hand happy job. ending. We have to go do ha happy ending massage. We're going after this. They're not going to de give you I don't think they do they that. Might put I a glove on one. What the fuck is this like? Are you going to discriminate against a vagina? I just don't think they do that. They just give her a shitty massage. Yeah, they I, might throw a glove on and flick her bean a bit. That's what I'm saying. Play my banjo. That's really so rude. Though? If I'm a paying customer, I honestly don't know. Cause I think I, they just give her a massage. I wonder. And then, fuck that. And then like massage her pussy. Like, no, I don't think they would. They're probably like they what are they forty bucks for a thirty minute massage here or what? Or it's probably more expensive here. I know for a fact that there has to be a place where women can get there. Their should there be. has to be. There there that's be. what I'm saying. And if there's not, Brad, I think I have a business idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hey. go get the new space down there. On so if you had a boyfriend you were dating for five years and he said, "Hey, can I get a, a rub and tug?" No. Like, would that be bad? For him to go and like get this is a great question from like yeah. a like just at a, a simple rub and tug, no oh, no emotional that's shit. That's fine with me. Oh, I love, with me. I love it. I love I, it. I, that's good. I'm cool with like if he wanted to like buy like you know like a sex worker or like anything like that. Like he's out with the homies and they want to like hook so up with a hooker. It's or the whatever. emotions. Cool, go for it. Yeah, mm. it's the emotions. It's the like the thought of him being out and like 
seeing a hot girl and you, calling her to a podcast and trying to fuck her, I would yeah. like your penis is gone. So you would really be okay though. If you're like, if I was like, say we were dating and mm -hmm. I like, I was like, yeah, I just fucked a hooker in Vegas and I come back and you're straight good with that. Well, we would have to have good communication. So you'd have to be like, Hey, I'm going out tonight. Yeah. Like he's you know? saying that earlier before that's, that's the most important thing is communicating. So if you were dating the guy and you guys had a rule, like you can hook up with a girl, but I don't want you talking to her after or doing it again. You might be okay with that. I don't trust these motherfuckers. I'm cool. Yeah. Like, I'll do I'll do like a three-way if it's like a foreign girl that doesn't speak English. Mm. You can <laughs> Yo, I love... Yo, how yeah. it's just... The Dive. parameters are if hilarious. He, if he's willing Dive. to learn a foreign language oh, for her, man. like, fine. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll take my loss. The parameters of this are just... That's perfect. <laughs> that's nice. I mean, that's... that's She's that's, got a rule book. A that's I a like yeah. That's solid. So if it's a foreign girl who speaks a different language... Damn, it's it's like kind of like we could work we could work that yeah, out. Yeah, and she has to have big tits because I don't have tits and I like boobs. Yeah, so it's like a yin and yang, but like it's a, like a lesser of an ass. Like it's, oh, it's a balance. See, it, it is. Like, oh, that's what it is. There's probably one girl. Eh, out it's there okay. That's she like, can be really yeah. hot as long as she doesn't speak English. Yeah, yeah. because like yeah. you know who you won't be able he won't be able to communicate as well with her. Is that why? Well, yeah. It's like if you want to go learn a foreign language for her, fine. I guess that's that's, that's a, a good rule. Wow, exactly it's like, funny. That's, you know, guys are so fucked that that they would try. I know he would like download <laughs> would, Google Translate and yeah, go for it. Yeah, fucking Oh my Hola, god, papa. Holy shit! Would man. you learn a foreign language for another girl that you liked? She, would I learn a foreign do you know, language? Do you know another language? I'm, my girl is from uh, Mexico. I know like, a Spanish. Her first language is Spanish, so and I've been with her for eight years. Wow. So it's like I, I know a little bit. I know a little bit. Has it always been an open relationship? I would say. I mean, the first conversation we had, we talked about earlier, was like, hey, I don't know how guys just fuck one girl for the rest of their life. But then it was like kind of took a couple years that we built our relationship. And then it kind of was like, hey, this is. So I'd say for the most part now, seven, eight years later, yeah, it's been mostly like that. Him too. And you're okay. Wow. Yeah. And you guys are okay with your girls going hooking up with other if, men? If that's the, I mean, why, how could I say no? No, I, I know that you can't say no, but like I'm asking like a genuine like question. Like emotionally, yeah. would I I would deal with it. I don't think it would be like the end of the world, but it would be t it would be like an emotion that I would have to deal with. And if she, if she's my best friend, and I love her, and she's causing another guy enjoyment, and that guy's causing her enjoyment, and I just don't like it. No, fuck that. That doesn't even make sense. That's not even really your best Crazy. friend then. It's Insecurity, jealousy, motherfucker. No, it's very interesting. Like I, I love this mindset, and because it's something I can't really relate to. Yeah, and I know you can't either, I'm Brad. Not Brad's not letting yeah, his no, girl I'm go fuck there. another guy. Yeah, like, I'm not there. You know, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn, that's fucking. I'm so, like, in your guys' experience, geez. does your girlfriends hook up with other people as I much as you guys now. hook up with other Thank, people? Thankfully, my girlfriend likes girls more than fucking guys. Interesting. That's fucking dope. Yeah, I mean, I have, we we talked about it earlier, but yeah, I, I I haven't had to deal with that yet. But if it comes around, crazy, it's not gonna I'm getting I'm I'm a little you know. How are you in an open relationship when it's only Dude, one sided? Part, I know you're saying it's okay. I yeah. know, but like I'm sa I'm saying like you know with actions, it is one sided because she is not hooking up with yeah. other men. But that's not my fault. But no, I, it's I, not I, your fault. I've almost like almost I don't want to encourage it, but I'm like I need to go through those emotions too because I know there's gonna be a fuckload of emotions to go through. But it's just hard for a girl to just, what do they do? Swipe on Tinder and just go to a random dude? No, you're, dude's you're right. Fucking... They don't go out. They don't go party and they don't go club and they don't really have like the urge to do that. Mm -hmm. And like she works, at, she loves doing hair. It's mm -hmm. her thing. She doesn't meet a lot of guys doing hair. So she's not like actively looking for, she's not swiping on Tinder, like trying to find a guy to fuck. So if it happens, it happens, but it's not one sided. It's not like I, she's not allowed to. That magic wand too. She likes you have oh, a magic wand? No, I have a Satisfier Pro 2. <laughs> Yo, Satisfier Pro 2. That magic wand. Dude, <laughs> number you. one toy in the last 10 years. No, That's if a you're sex with Emily. Not so. using toys on your girl, you are like fucking yes, up. Like, I, there, every, every time though? Junior. Yeah. Well, I think every time we have sex, it's like grab the grab out, plug it in, vibrate yeah. that little clit while I fuck you. Yeah. It's like it's why? Like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> you know why not? Mm -hmm. But there's some men who get a little insecure about that. Are done. Um, and there's no reason to <laughs> because your Are penis is not oh in the same category as a sex toy. Like they're not yeah. comparable because they're not the same. Your Say penis that again? doesn't vibrate. Like yeah, a penis yeah, yeah. and a sex toy, they don't. It's they're not, not mechanical. The same. Exactly. But right. there's men that are like, oh no, I don't. That thing fucks you better than me. What? Get all insecure really? and weird. I've had multiple experiences like where I've been like, hey, I'm gonna like, bring my, and they're like, no, oh, I'm not really. Doing that. Oh wait, remember, uh, your buddy. Yeah. That was that. It's easy for a guy though. Like we have a condom on. It's easy for a guy to pump on a girl and just have not many emotions attached to it. Yes. But exactly. for a girl, is it different? I mean, in my experience, no, I can fucking never talk to you again and not yeah. care. But it's like, if I do, if I do care about you, like, 
yeah, it hurts really bad. Mm -hmm. Knowing that someone that I love is interested in fucking other people and like that whole, oh, I'm not enough kind of thing so do you yeah. rings really in the back of my love head. Them then? Maybe I've never been in real love. Yeah. Because I don't, I've never experienced that feeling where I'm like, oh, it's okay if they're with whoever. Yeah. I know they love me. One yeah. book that helped me <laughs> a lot with that was The Mastery of Love. That book, that book puts not, love into a perspective that I was never aware of. When'd you read that book? Um, I've read it a couple times. And who did we hear it from? The Mastery of Love. The Mastery of Love. That's the one that changed your perspective on that's, it? That's Esther Perel. That's, yeah. Is that who's talked about it? Yeah, that's that who was talking about it, dude. Um, that book fucking puts love into a perspective where it's like, oh, like, okay. It's it, a lot of possessiveness. It's like, it, it really, really fucking helped me a lot. Yeah, because I think for the most part, we're taught like, until reading stuff or yeah. learning more like this, we're taught to have that possessive niche. Yeah, you like, watch a movie, you dude, see how marriages are, relationships are. You're like, oh, that's what it is. Movies from when you're a little tiny tyke. Movies and songs. Yeah. And it's just engraved in our culture and yeah. our brain that that's the one way. And more than that, like more the more so than seeing like you know monogamous couples, the like problem that people have with cheating is like Lying. it's huge in media. Like oh, they cheated on me, it's the end of our relationship, like it's the biggest thing they've ingrained in us that being with somebody stepping out of that relationship is like the end all be all to yeah, it. I'm gonna pick like me and Brad were in a room and he was like, let's go. I would probably not do it. Really? Like just to be you completely like to honest. It, I like fun. to yeah. fuck with him and he's the kind of person where there no women in his life are coming on to him like that. So it's just funny this to see funny. his reaction. No. Yeah. But I don't think I would like actually fuck him because really? I'm scared. I knew they were talking shit about me. <laughs> no, we're trying to get you hooked up. No, I was talking yeah. about your type and she's saying it's BB dub. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, every once in a while. No, Dude, she, uh, what were you talking about? I said that your type, like you, I was saying I'm the polar opposite of your type. You like a girl with a beautiful tan. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's fair. Yeah. Dude, just yeah. chicks though. It's yeah, just girls in general. They're beautiful. So you guys have never had an attraction to men? <sighs> no, I haven't. No, <laughs> I, I put Sean in a scenario a couple times, like a girl like, that he's really attracted to, he's making out with, and and I said, what if everything girl. was good, and she just had a little wiener at the end <laughs> yeah. of the night, she had a little wiener. Well, what about a giant wiener? Well, whoa, whoa, <laughs> fuck like, it. Whoa. Just, I mean, and you know, well, you know what he said to wieners. <laughs> what? No, what did he say? <laughs> no, 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 no. He was saying, that, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what were you saying? Comedy, you dog. A little? That's Bro, okay. Have you, have you seen some <laughs> transgenders that I'm like, holy shit? Yeah, this am person is beautiful. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, and that's am I gay? <laughs> that does not make you gay. Yeah, that was like, it holy doesn't. shit. No, okay, no. Good. If you being fuck it in the, her okay, in the butt, good. no. I, I'm telling you and right now, it does not make you gay. If you're and I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Okay, when you initially, when you initially saw this person in their form and they were presenting as a woman, you were attracted to them because you're you're attracted Makes to women, sense. you know? Yeah. And that, her, them having whatever is in their pants, it doesn't change the fact that you're attracted to women Unless and you are attracted up in to your this mouth person. Or your butt. Yeah. All I'm, but that, I don't, I don't really yes. think so, But you know? if it ends up in your mouth though. That's where it switches a bit. So what's the, what's the difference between like oh. sucking a penis and like getting pegged? Like, it's like, it's wait, both things. Wait, 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 both. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Both That's sugar shit. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just one of them's just too gay for you? No, it, no. I think to, they're both equally, it's the same. It's like you so have. So you think it's gay if I were to put my fingers in your butt? No, no. Okay. This is different. This is a little different. I'm, but if you had a penis and put it in my butt. Yeah. See? Yeah. I well, like. But what if I used a dildo? If I was uh, at the massage then, and her finger maybe, went, Maybe, I yeah, mind. yeah. Yeah. See, I I know and when you're getting your like head, she oh, yeah. doesn't put her finger in your butt great. and like I rub like your it. gooch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like love. That. Okay, so then like you like things in your butt. Yeah, exactly. yeah but but not wieners. Like. <laughs> yeah, okay, but like if it was a wiener, in you and it was wrapped. Yes, you wouldn't really <laughs> yeah. mind. Or if it was like a why pink, would you wrap something in your butt? If it was like a pink plastic, like cute one. in the butt. Yeah, it's good to put condoms on your sex toys. Whoa. Is it really? Wait, also, what? I just want to give a tip. If you're going to put something in your butt, make you sure. You said this, hold on. You said this tons of times. I know. But you're like, going to say this again? I'm going to tell you guys again. Okay, make fine. sure it has a stock on the bottom. because Otherwise, it's going to get trapped in your, in your butt. Oh. I know. I have to say because it's really common. It's fine. It's really it happened, you're like a medical it disclaimer. Happen it happens oh. at work all She's the time. She's like a medical disclaimer. She's like, yeah. FYI, guys, this will happen. I work in the medical field, so I, yeah. But it's, it's common. So I That's don't, good to know. I don't think you're gay if you are attracted to a trans woman and then you end up playing with her penis. What if you know I was curious about that, yeah. Hmm? Well, you know she's trans first, and you know she has a little wiener. Wait, do they have little wieners? It, uh, so it, I think pretty sure it's a like big one, little one, whatever. It's one. A, but yeah, I mean, exactly. matter but but is it is that what it is? But some have surgery. Yeah. So, so like it's the same. Nub? And I have personally seen and felt a transgender woman's vagina. Have you, dude? It goes inside. 
it goes inside it they have sensation it literally looks almost anatomically correct i only could be like oh it looks a little bit man-made because i have my own you know like that's i have crazy. one for personal wow. reference what the fuck yeah but like it works the same like you can flick the bean and everything what yeah but it and doesn't like, get wet um well sometimes i i've heard that some of them <laughs> you got this fit ready <laughs> but i had we had lube when i oh really my experience wait what did you do wait you hooked up with the trans girl yeah one did time. you really that's yeah awesome. that's pretty cool what the fuck yeah but i didn't know she was trans when i had met her at first but then and she talked told me crazy. and did she, she tell you before or after you did the before okay and i think that's important you know i i do for trans women's safety i think it's important to disclose you during know? Um, well, before <laughs> only because if I know that hey, by the way, I just, yeah, after, you're like, it yeah. can be unsafe. But, Holy yeah. shit! Interesting, interesting. Yeah, but it was like it felt great, and it was very tight, very cute. She was a cute girl. Damn, that's awesome! Wow, yeah. that is that was crazy. That's awesome. I just think if you suck a dick, it's like that's. I mean, that's. But I, she's it, the hot chick you've been making out with all night. She's slim, uh, and you guys have this chemistry. Suck, dude. She, I feel like you're I trying know. to talk yourself into it. No, I'm trying to get the hon- <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get the honesty out of Brad. Yes. No, dude. I, I still no. feel like it's just it's it's sucking a dick no matter what. It's still a dick, right? No. I, mean, I don't know. Is. I think if that one girl from figure. Florida was like, hey. No. <laughs> I have no. a penis, but I'm down to fuck. You no. Get on a plane. <laughs> okay, it's like <laughs> Yo, it's just not it's so interesting to me. It is, yeah. dude. Isn't the, the, but are there are there people who say like it's like wrong if you don't want to do that? Yeah, there are people that say that it's like transphobic. I don't believe that. I yeah. think that everyone's entitled to their preference, whether it's a fucking the color of your skin, the gender that you have, right, whatever right. it is. You're entitled to preference. You're allowed B-W. to have it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Definitely. So what did, did she talk about the fact that she thinks she could fit my whole dick in her mouth? Did she talk about that yet? <laughs> no, she has. It's not a thing I know. Okay. okay. I know I could. She's convinced this. Do you think she could fit your whole dick? I mean, some dude, some girls have like some special yeah. powers that they can but really. But they're fucking. The they walls just, expand. And they're just horny. They could just fuck. Can you fit a beer can in your mouth? <laughs> a beer can? I haven't tried to fit a whole beer can. Beer he cans are kind of thick. Beer can Honestly, <laughs> if I if someone pulled out a beer can penis, I'd be like a little intimidated really? by that. That is a Damn. fat peen. Yeah. Very fat. I mean, we could try. Are you like a fat peen guy or a skinny and long or what? Um, yeah, this is such a, a funny question. That is. Just That's, be honest. I mean, I, I'm. You want to see? Yeah. <laughs> they can make something happen. Okay. I'll let yeah. you guys know. Not right here. Um, uh, what no. about you? Like, do you? I would say I'm average. You just yeah. an average penis. Just average. Got it. Which I which I kind of like, I guess. I agree. If you have an average penis and you're good at with it, perfect. Yeah. He didn't say that. He said he's up average. Uh, honestly, he I ended it there. Yeah, he I stopped like right he, there. He gives he like me Christian average. Gray vibes. I don't worry about him. He's I actually, know he's uh, good Jehovah. at bed. Jehovah's Witness. What? No, used to be. Used to be. Wow. Did you really used to be? Until ninth grade, I was raised a Jehovah's oh, okay. Witness. Yeah, yeah. Where'd and you grow up? We grew up in Great Falls, Montana, an hour away from him, Helena, Montana, for him. So you grew up, you grew up in Montana as well. Yeah. What was your family like? Childhood like? Um, you know, Pre- pretty normal. Was, oh. I felt like it was normal. Fucking played sports and went to school. Hated it. Tried to get chicks. Yeah. Both parents there, still there. Yeah. Not. They got a divorce recently, but yeah. You know, it was like. Uh, I feel like it was just normal fucking childhood. Yeah. Nothing that you'd be like, be like, this is why I'm a fighter. Yeah, no, I could. I mean, yeah, I, I, that was just kind of fucking random, really. You Were just, you fighting as a like? I didn't like adolescent? fighting. No, not really. Like my older brother would fuck with me a lot, and maybe that happened or made it. Made it. I don't know. Fuck. I feel like I. Just, I didn't like confrontation. It wasn't like I've gotten to fights outside of the gym or even before fighting. So it's so interesting. It's like yeah. to be such a skilled, such a good fighter, and come just mm. you just you're just like I'm just gonna do this shit because it long sounds have you fun. Been doing it. 11 years. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. Really long time. When did you start as a kid then? 16. I'm 27. Yeah. We t- sorry, yeah, we talked yeah, about it. Yeah, I wasn't here for it's that. It's all good. That's insane. Yeah. We brought you in more for the... um for the To just have sex and leave? The, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not exactly, but um, no. Me for my what? body? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we, don't, we don't use... No, more for your, for your, uh, your conversation pieces. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. No, because they're really conversation. good conversation pieces. <laughs> They are. I think you've uh, elevated the pot. I think it makes it better. Mm. Thank you. Thank I, you. Just, I think you guys being here makes it better too. And Brad. Yeah. Sorry. But um, <laughs> so with fighting and when you were a kid, you weren't getting in fights. Like it wasn't, you weren't like a kid that was constantly was getting in street fights. I was a little fights. fucking kid. Like I was a little dude that, no, I was, I was playing football, basketball, soccer, baseball. I played other sports, ball sports. Like fighting was random as fuck. 
interesting. What about for you? Was it yeah. random for you? Do you fight? Kind of, Sorry. kind of a little bit for me, but I, like I said, I was raised Jehovah's Witnesses, and I saw my dad watching some fights when I was like eighth grade. Started wrestling and boxing in ninth grade, and just kind of wanted to get chicks, so I just learned chicks. how to fight. Do, Have you guys fought each other? He's my coach. Yeah, yeah. We we fought each other a handful of times in the room. Yeah. Has anyone ever, ever tried to fight you guys like in the street? No, fuck no. <laughs> Our neighbor did. We always keep that oh, in the God. story. Our neighbor did, and he was a small little jack guy. And then we took him to the gym. <laughs> tried to fight who? <laughs> Sugar. He's like, he's like, <laughs> well, he looked at me. He's like, I can tell you're a pro fighter, but this kid, if he can be a pro fighter, I want to spar him. So I had a key to the UFC gym, and I. Oh, you guys went there. sparred. Yeah. I, yeah. And Sugar kicked him in his gut, and Sugar's <laughs> dog was there, oh, and God. there's poop that fell onto the ring. And the, the shit was getting smeared, and I'm filming it, and the guy shit himself, and he I was I thought it was Wait. the dog, but we watched the video, and it was poop that fell out of his pants. And you was kicked him, and he around. shit himself. Yeah. Like, would you hit him in the side or something? Yeah. Oh, my God. <clears throat> and I said, Tony, you shit yourself. You need to clean it up. He said, no, I didn't. The dog did. And we looked at the video, and it was Tony. He shit himself. But Why did he want to fight you? Oh, that's this so is embarrassing. This little jacked fucking dude. He thought he could beat me. I don't know. I mean, Did was, he get any no, shots actually, on you? No. There was no beef. Yeah, it wasn't like, I love that. I don't. There wasn't like any actual beef, but he just. I don't know how. how like, like we drove him there and home. Right. <laughs> oh no, I get With it. I get it. Pants, and the attitude you, changed. Yeah. You fought, no. Home? Be he honest though. You fought him twenty percent. Well, yeah. I mean, I I'm not gonna try to hurt someone in the head. Like I'm not trying to knock them out. I don't yeah. want to get brain damage. You know what I mean? So you're just like I'm just, I might, the kick was probably like hundred percent to the body. That's fine. Dude, a kick, to, like a full kick from a man, like, ow. That would hurt it, so bad. Yeah, it doesn't feel great. I yeah. couldn't imagine. I think that would hurt worse than a punch. Have you ever had any, like, injuries, like ribs? Besides, obviously, your... I broke my foot. I just, uh, I fractured my thumb last fight. Um, I broke my nose a couple times. But other, other than that, I've been pretty pretty lucky. That was the, that was the... Um, that fight, that, that foot injury was my worst one for sure. That was fucked. Yeah. My, my foot, like, the top of my foot snapped, basically. That was when they tried to give you the, the one, right? The what? The one, the loss. No, that was something different. This fight I actually won so, still. So, wait. I thought that was a fight you injured yourself No, here. I. so there's a nerve right here, like behind your knee. It's like a perennial nerve. Mm -hmm. That's where he kicked me. And then my your, my whole foot went numb, and I kept rolling my ankle. Okay. Like I literally couldn't walk forward. And then when did, you, when did you fuck this up? That was my second UFC fight. Oh, okay. that was yeah, that was two thousand. You gotta watch that one, Brad. He's bounced around crazy. on one foot. He can't stand. He's still trying to fight to get his. It's a good fight. And then the kid took me down. There's three minutes left when I broke my foot, and I was hopping around on one foot because I I literally couldn't. My foot was snapped in half, and he took me down for some reason. And then the fight ended on the ground. But yeah, it was fucking nuts. What's the what was the recovery like on this? Uh, it, it hurt for two years and still fucks with me. A every like fight. Was, um yeah, it it, it like because I like to run, so my, it gets sore when I run. But it was called the Liz Frank surgery. Like, I mean, it could potentially be a career-ending injury for like guys in the NFL. It has been before and stuff. But yeah, no, it was a fucking that was a horrible injury. I was yeah. I didn't try, I didn't fight for two years. That's Jesus. right. So so who's next? Is it Cody? Is it it's definitely? Cruz? I mean, I, I have no idea. My my hand my thumb still like fractured. It's it's healing nicely right now. Um, I just need to get back. To, I just need to improve. I just need to get back to the gym and start training. Yeah. I, who's next? I don't know. When? I don't fucking know. I'd, if I had to guess, I'd probably say July, which is kind of a long time. But I, I just need to get that. back to the fucking gym. Do you have a dream fight? Like someone who you want to fight bad? Uh, not really. If, if I had to say one person, probably Peter Yan, the Russian. The Damn. Russian dude. He's a fucking gangster. He's like, I, in my eyes, probably one of the best pound for pound fighters yeah. in, the, in the world. That guy's right now. crazy, He's a motherfucker. I think dude. it'd be a sick fucking fight. Do you think, fight. like, if you could fight that guy next week, you think you're ready for that fight? I think next week I'd probably lose because I fucking have been training. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, right. But let's say you've been training. Let's say you've been training. My bad. Right. Let's no, say you've been training. I, I, I'm, yeah, I don't. I don't look at Peter Yan and like think oh, I couldn't beat like, him. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have said that just now. Like I want to fight him if I didn't think that. I, I could fight Peter. Like I could be. I could be anybody in the division right now. I yeah. believe my skills are that high. I'm, a, I'm able to perform at the highest level. Like And knows how much better he still can get. And like yeah. fight camps, you get in shape for that 15-minute fight. Between fight camps, that's your time to improve your skills. Mm -hmm. And I fucking, dude, I'm, I cr I'm craving just to get home and like get train. healthy. Like yeah. I haven't been able to train since my fight. I fought five weeks ago. I haven't been able to train just because I've been this. My knee was super sore. Um, so you I haven't trained. You still focus on your diet and stuff, though, right? I still eat pretty clean and uh, you haven't done any good. like training. 
I mean, I've ran a couple times. My fucking knee's been real sore. Um, I, so I've ran, and then I've went to like that Brandon guy, the strength and conditioning. But yeah. you, there's only so much you can do with fucking your thumb hurt and your knee hurting. Yeah. But yeah, so I haven't really been training at all. We hit mitts once, one handed when I had my cast on. Um, but I need that too. I need that fuck because training camps are so. I fought three times last year, which is like a. I think three times is like a good amount. I'll probably fight twice this year, but I, I probably needed this. Have you ever year. had an injury where you can't lift at all? Um, I had a sciatic pain Ooh. injury, like, you know, the, where it shoots down your leg. Yeah. I had it to the point where I couldn't even like crease my hips. Like if I bent my hips at all, mm-hmm. they just shoot down my leg. How long, how long did that last? Yeah. Um, maybe about five months, but I, I fixed it. I did like a certain stretches and I did it like every morning, mm-hmm. every afternoon, every night. And I ended up fixing it just to like lengthening. It's crazy and, like, how stretching is so yeah, powerful. It's so yeah. fucking underrated, it like is. extremely underrated. 100%. And that's when I learned about it because prior to that, like I didn't really do much stretching, but <clears throat> I'm talking about that injury. I, I did a good morning with like 315, which is not too much weight for me. So I'm doing a good morning. <laughs> and <clears throat> my knee, I popped my knee in somehow on the way up. And there I felt that pain. And then again, it was like, it got to the point where just if I like crease my hips at all, like push my butt back or like went to do any sort of like hip hinge thing, like go pick up a deadlift or squat, like even the slightest, it was just sharp shooting pain. And I couldn't even, I couldn't do anything. The only thing I was doing was like sitting in like pull ups and push ups and shit like that. And like your, your career is working out in your body, so is yours. How does that feel having an injury where you can't do what you love? Like, does that weigh on your mental health? Mental, for sure. Oh, that's like, the worst that thing. That release you get from working out. Like, I can't believe some people just literally don't work out I ever. Like, yeah, I, 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 in life, I've form. actually realized that like I can't. I can't understand people who don't work out yeah. in some form, like not necessarily like some bodybuilder. Dude, going on a hike. Anything. Going on a walk. Going on a an walk. incline walk. Yeah. People who don't work out, it actually yeah. trips me out. Yeah. Also, people who don't like dogs. But, but they also don't know story. how good they can feel. <laughs> yeah. Like some people just don't know how good they can feel. They just live this life. It's kind of this, just like this over and over. They don't know that they can feel better with yeah. their diet or with working out. Well, that's the same thing we're talking about. Even like the relationship thing, like people are taught how to be or yeah. live a certain way. Until like you see the other side, you're like, oh shit, that's a possibility. Yeah. And the, the the working out one is so real. Like I just, I wish everyone who listened to this, I just hope you guys already work out, but like, please just do something. Cause it does change so much of your, your mind and your, your body follows. Dude, then it changes all your relationships and the people mm-hmm. around you and shit. But dude, when you get hurt, when you're used to training twice a day, every single day and you get that release and you get hurt and you can't, you gotta fucking battle some demons. Mm-hmm. But that's a good time to fucking work on your brain and, and read and, and put your work ethic you had toward your sport into getting better. I couldn't fucking – because I stream every day on Twitch. I play yeah. Call of Duty. But after that fight, like I couldn't train or game because I had a oh. fucking cast on. Oh it wasn't God. that bad. Like it was I, – I, That shit would piss me off. It though. was tough. I was like, fuck, two of the things I do every day that I love to do, like I can't do either of them. It was fucked. You probably get a lot of new co- hobbies, though. You get yeah, well, I have a, little, like I have a princess, so I have a daughter. That you probably get a lot of joy out of her. Mm-hmm. How old? She's the cutest thing in the world. Oh, my gosh. With your um, girlfriend? Yeah, awesome. she's one. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I wanted to ask this when we were talking about open relationships. Do you see yourself, like, getting married, either of you? Been married. What? Well, yeah, we've been married yeah. for a long time. But yeah. it's not like labels are fucking so weird to me. Like, I don't feel like we didn't get married, so I'm like, okay, I own you now. Wear your ring, so everyone fucking knows. It was like, she's from Mexico type shit. Oh, okay. (laughs) And the the whole marriage thing, it's like, fuck. So now, if if we cordially decide in a couple years that, hey, our paths are going different ways, now it's got to be a big pain in the fucking ass. It's very easy to get married. It's It's a business hard to get divorced. 100%. It's a a bad contract to sign, I think. Absolutely. And I think about it, like, because I'm friends with Brad now, and, like, talking to people like you guys, like, there are so many people who just want to get that ring, get it's that. It's so weird. Girls you know? are like, like, get upset if their guys doesn't ask them to get married after mm-hmm. a certain amount of years. It's yes. Like, what? I don't get that. I really don't. I don't get that I, either. I think girls that don't really have a passion and they're thinking yeah. about what's next and they're thinking about, oh, this day, now I can plan for the next year about this wedding and this day, and they don't have a passion, something that they're actually into. Yeah. I agree. Are there some people that think that being a wife is, or not think, but they want to be a wife. That's like yeah. their life goal. I want to be a wife and not even be a mom, but I just want to be somebody's wife. And then you're a wife and, that's and you're okay. like, what's next? But I, I get curious about people like you who, you know, explore other women and things like that. Um, if being married is something you would even want to entertain. Like for you, are you married? 
No. I've yeah. been with my girl for 11 years, though. So, and do you see yourself marrying her? Or if just it was super, super important to her, and maybe when we have kids, but I'm like, even still, I'm like, what's the fucking point? There I is. think we're I married. Yeah. You're my best friend. You're my partner, and I want to be with you forever. But why do we have to go sign this contract and mm -hmm. do all this paperwork? It just doesn't yeah, make sense. To prove it's real, bud. To prove it's real. That's how you prove yeah. love is real. Yeah, exactly. You sign on the dotted yes. line. Exactly. Go to court. Yes. That's like the thing that's like the least real. It's right. fucking crazy. Exactly. No, that, so. I mean, it's really cool though. Like how different sides of the spectrum. One person's like, oh, I don't really see the point in someone else who I don't is. Fuck, yeah, I don't see the point either. We did it. I mean, like we did it two years into our relationship and it was like, she from Mexico was trying to help with the, you know, the process. The, like we're going to be green together yeah. for forever in my eyes. Like who knows what's going to happen. Went to the court, fucking. went to court. It wasn't like we had a wedding and like invited fucking 20 people. You, I have like four friends like people? that I actually <laughs> hang out with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Weddings and big get togethers are, are fucking weird to me too. Yeah. No, I, I mean, agree. it's all for I other people agree. at that point. Like it's, it's like, all, all my for friends, your friends. And you friends spend a ton of money wedding. on something. I just, it's just not that important to me. Me neither. Yeah. It's like the, the love and actual relationship is the important part. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I think people like, they, they, they live their life thinking that they have to get to that point where it's like this big ceremony and now this means it's real. And it's like, all right, well, yeah. And then it happens and then it's like, what's next? You know I, mean? I, I like, 100% okay, agree with you. Now, now you got to buy me a house. Yeah. That was the exactly. biggest thing. Like, you know, the, the whole relationship, the end goal was to get married. And then once everyone's married, they're like, oh, eternal happiness. Now what? Yeah. What do we do? It's, but it's like, we're, like, again, we're taught, like, it's, we're just taught to live, like, going towards that. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm, it I don't is. know how the fuck we got there. Yeah. Me neither. We need to change it. Religion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Religion it's true. That's why we got there. <laughs> Are you guys religious? Any, like, I know you said you were, but. I'm a Catholic. No, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, yeah, you're I, such a troll. I mean, it's so funny. No, I don't get religion very much. Like, me it doesn't either. make much sense to me. How, there's so many, and each of them will die and say, no, mine's right. And I will kill you to prove it. But, okay. And, like, yeah. more so on, like, a grander scheme, like, the country is run on religion. Yeah. A lot of religious, um, weird. you know, yeah. ideologies that most people don't believe in. It's very yeah. radical. Or they do believe in it. Heavily. I know, like, yeah. a bunch of people are like, no, I'm a Christian. Like, what do you, what, you don't live like that. Like I'm your, exactly. I'm your friend. I know what the shit you do. You're not a fucking Christian, <laughs> bud. Yeah. yeah. Like, just go to ask for forgiveness and then you, yeah, you're good. good. Yeah. And so, that's oh, crazy. To fuck me. man. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's a, it's, we're getting canceled this pod. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, no, we're not. We're no, talking we're about not. religion. Like, no, you know. we're not. Our, it's just your opinion. This you know? is our daily fuck. I mean, we have our podcast too. We, this is shit we talk about. We haven't gotten canceled yet. So what is the name of your yeah. podcast? So that everyone listening knows. Timbo sugar show. Nice. How, I mean, how many days a week you guys do it? Once a week. Yeah, we, do, we pop out one once a week. And you, what do you guys mostly talk about so the people listening know? We're, I mean, we pretty much every pod has something to do with the UFC. That if there's a fight coming up, um, yeah. talk a lot about eating healthy, sleeping better, hide, like th those core things is kind of when we started our pod. Um, you know, we'll recap this trip, obviously. Little things like that, but yeah. but, but Im improving mental mental health stuff like that but yeah really some humor every fucking thing yeah that's the thing i like the most though you bringing up like the meditation stuff like i actually didn't know that about you guys yeah. that you like practice that i knew obviously you guys took the, the sleep stuff serious the food the training mm -hmm. but the meditation stuff like when did that really start like you said you listen to aubrey how many years ago was that aubrey was more so with the open yeah. relationship it, it, I really got okay. into it because I fucking, when I broke my jaw, I, they wired my face shut mm -hmm. for like eight weeks and it was so tight like Oof. that it just shot headaches up your, and I was like, I can't fucking live like this. I want to kill myself. So I'm like, I got to get through it. So then I started just looking into stoicism and meditation and reading the Tim Ferriss shit and I started doing it and started realizing just how fucking powerful and how much it's changed my life and you started teaching him that mm -hmm. just kind of talking okay. to him about it. Say, Hey, research this dude. I think this is super important, especially for fighting. So that's what we got. And then like guys like Sam Harris, the waking up app, doing different apps to learn how to meditate. Like he has a 50 day course where you do it every morning and you kind of like learn, you start at three minutes, then you go to five minutes, then you go to 10 minutes and like just learning how to meditate. I mean, it's not waking hard. Up. You just waking fucking, up. I mean, there's different ways to meditate. Have you, Most. have you, have you noticed meditation in, like making not just fighting better, but just like your relationships 100%. or like, dude, when something happens that you weren't expecting to happen, you either can go off that initial emotion and let it take over, or you can be like, oh, damn, I see that emotion coming. Let's decide which way I want to go, which is the best way to go. Yeah. From I want to be like you. So you said the waking up app. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm so serious. I, I want to learn to meditate so bad. I'm just someone who like will sit down and do it. And I'm like, 
this is fucking stupid. Too what much Adderall. I, I sound so dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it's probably too much Adderall. No, yes. I, one thing, I don't, I don't take Adderall until I've She's like, I don't know why I can't focus. breakfast <laughs> and worked out, you know, I, I don't, you know. She's like, but, she yeah, rips a lot. Right. You're right. Fuck, though. I can't I'm calm down. In my head, and I'm like, is this working? Is it working right now? Am I meditating yet? It is working. Like, am I zen? Is this working? So that's the thing. Is like, <laughs> am I zen? It's like just I'm letting that. Yeah. It's like letting that just keep go, and like till it kind of calms down. That's yeah. like the key. I mean, to I'll be there all day. Like, yeah. I'm, they're like focused on your breathing, and I'm like, oh my god, I have labored breathing. I have cancer. I have a lung tumor. <laughs> like, yeah. Overthinking. Oh yeah. my god, I am really convinced I have cancer. Like, no, just I don't cause? know. If no. you look at my search history right now, you would think. Well, actually, you would see porn because I watched porn to go to bed last night. But nice. Before I was watching porn, <laughs> I was googling no. esophageal cancer. Because I like you on. I literally so get like, her hyped up, dude. No, I swear. No, she's like now porn. Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I can't. I also haven't been able to like orgasm lately because I'm really stressed out. I don't Ooh, know if you guys have like that. experienced this, but when I get really stressed and really like or when like I, depressed, I can't orgasm. Yeah, like when I'm in my head, like when you're super in your head. Bro, guys I, can orgasm, but don't matter. I will He's sit like, there Ugh. with a vibrator on full blast. Literally, it could fucking give the earthquake, mm -hmm. give an earthquake or some shit, split a fault. I will hold it on my clip for 35 minutes and. It's just like, I feel nothing. Yeah. I can't, seriously. <laughs> Rip some Adderall. Feel, I can't feel anything. I wonder if the Adderall in the bank has no. anything to do with it. It could be that fucking vape. No, okay, because like on. four days ago, I had like, I was squirting, right? And Ooh. then now I'm just like not able to. I think like for me too, I go through cycles where I'm like very horny. And then there's yeah. times where I'm like, I'm just not that horny. Yeah, I think so. that's accurate. Super accurate. The moon, fucking shit, you know. It's a moon in the in the gravity and the waves and shit. The gravity's yeah. off. Yeah. That's why I can't fucking orgasm. Sun. No, it's like I it's think you're bad. just in your head. I think so too. I think I'm like sitting there, like trying to come so bad that because I'm, I'm I get pissed off. I'm not even kidding. Like wow. I get really upset because I'm like, this is there something wrong with me? How many hours a day do you think you like scrolling? Six or seven? Scrolling on the phone. Oh, um, I'd say probably two or three. Really, I don't get on my phone very much because Damn, that's, I, not bad. that's like social media makes me feel really overwhelmed. Yeah. Mm. So, I wonder if you should stop taking Adderall. Yes, I don't probably. want or up to the stop. dose. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, like yeah. you're you're probably right. Maybe yeah. I should like try yeah. not to, but probably. when I don't take it, I feel like I'm a lesser of a person, and I know that's bad. But it's like yeah, I dude, feel like I'm not. I you'll feel like my get ADHD over that though, over. and then it's kind of you know what I mean. I probably feel like that for a few days, mm -hmm. and then kind of. Psh, it'd probably be tough, dude. It Coming off heroin, tough. like that's probably what it'd be like. It's meth, okay? It's not yeah. heroin, but no, I mean, I want to stop smoking weed. I don't know if you guys smoke weed, but yeah, I enjoy a little puff. I yeah, I, I have to take weed. time off of that every once in a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, do, you like to lift when you're high, or yes, you switch yes. It up, do you? yes, I love it. It's <laughs> actually incredible. Um, but you've talked about this before, how you can't get too high. It's like a certain amount. Oh, yeah, right? if I get too high, I get terrible anxiety, yeah. and I think I'm gonna die. Just paranoid. And it's like. I need to step out of the gym and be like, fuck, you what's have going on? one side of white, it's just like racked up. The other side's not even on there. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> not. <laughs> squats, like, what the fuck? What's going on? Like, why do I feel like, no, I just like totally get in my own head and like, it's just, I get full blown anxiety if I'm yeah. too high. Do you guys smoke? Yeah, usually we smoke. We don't try not to abuse it, but and fucking get our shit done during the day and then smoke at the night. But I, I wonder how much of that anxiety and shit comes from shitty weed. Yeah, there's, that's a huge fucking thing. Just like shitty food. Or just pesticides on that weed and you're just going... Growing it as yeah. fast Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't lights. know. Yeah. But but when it's like perfect, like the, the, just the right amount, oh my God, these the workouts best. are insane. I like a, my favorite high, well, right now, it's probably like a low temp dab. Just a small dab. I can't even take a dab. Dude, I'm no, afraid I know. of that. It, it's because you've taken too big of a dab. If you take a tiny dab on a low temp, it's such a smooth high. I yeah, agree. But, I feel like it's just you get too high when you take. You don't. Dabs. If you take a, l a little dab, I'm talking a tiny dab, it fucking hits. He's you probably nice. only done dabs that there's a torch and, and you, you fucking. <sighs> dab. Yeah, like yeah. I'm just thinking dabs, but Steve will do red it. Red it's like, when you put it in, yeah. <laughs> this guy used to put like a fucking giant. Like I couldn't do that. Bro. Yeah, no, that would fuck me he up. He has these doctor yeah. dabber things that you can do it on a high temp, low temp, or a medium temp, and you can just mm -hmm. do a little bit, really yeah. clear head doctor high. Doctor dabber fire. It doesn't. You don't get anxious. Do you ever get anxious? If I get too, oh, like in, in general. No, no. When you smoke. Oh fuck yeah! If I get too high, dude, I hate being too high. You gotta say like Brad drinking Dabber. too much caffeine. Yeah, I'll send you one. It's like drinking too much caffeine. I'm like, I don't like being like, too much caffeine. I'm like fucking. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I feel like I'm like, what the fuck is just like being too high or being overdoing anything, eating too many fucking cheeseburgers. You know what I mean? But yeah, getting too high. Have you ever trained? Have you ever like not not jujitsu high? Jujitsu high is fucking fire. Uh, he's a UFC fighter. 
fight. Yeah, and yeah. he's been Wait, training. So you can do everything. I mean, yeah. UFC's, there's is, just like You can everything. do jujitsu in a UFC fight? Yeah. Uh, yes, you could also wrestle. You could strike. Yeah. You could, I want. You I just want to make it clear. I have no fucking idea what UFC really? is. Like, no, I, you know what UFC I is. Like, I like know, but it's like, I didn't know that you could just like jujitsu. How somebody. many sides are on the octagon? Okay. And I'd that's eight, not, is it that's octo? Math. Uh, I, know. I have that's physics degree. Okay. No, I get confused. Like, because in boxing, you can't kick somebody. Correct. But like in... In UFC, and then there's MMA. MMA is mixed martial arts. UFC is the promotion, like football and NFL. MMA. Oh. UFC. Yes. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And so, like, I've always wondered this. I know it's probably a stupid question. Can you hit someone in the balls, or is that no. illegal? No. Oh, okay. It used, used to be legal. It, yeah. Hey, I, I think about how I'm gonna win this fight, and I'm absolutely. Grabbing the nuts. What about that? What about that rule when like the knees down, you can't kick them or something? It's it's, it's different in other states, but yeah, if their knees down. You can't actually the knees down. You can't kick 100 yeah. to the head. You can kick them in the. But body. if they're, ha- if they're if both the feet are down, down and the hands down, you can't kick to the head either. Unless, Once that comes yeah. up, you can go. So if they're down, you can't kick them in the head, pretty Correct. much. Oh, I mean, that, that's a fair rule. You got to jump on them and fucking yeah. hammer that's a, that's fist. A fair you can rule. Elbow them in the head, but you just can't kick them. In like one FC in Japan's promotion, it's like the UFC, but in uh, Asia, you can kick them in the face on the ground and shit and stomp. Are Damn. there any rules that you think are stupid? Yeah, that's a good question. Um. Any rules that I think are stupid, like you're not—it's a weird rule. You're not allowed to like twelve to six elbow Down, like this, yeah. which is so stupid because you could fucking suck. You can kick someone in the head if they're standing up, which is way more damage than if I was to like try to hit someone like that. It's a—it's a dumb rule. Like, like if someone's head like, is here, hitting them here, they yeah. don't want you. To and do you could do it at like an angle, but like twelve to six, it's a fucking. I kind of get that rule though. You could fucking compress their spine, compress their neck. I you're strong you when you stomp them too. But there's a lot of spots where you could fucking spike the top of someone's head and fuck them up. Well, yeah, but could I mean, you, you can't fist? even top. To, you can't even. Do, you can't even do this to someone's body. Boom. Like twelve to six. Yeah, that's dumb. That's but dumb. you can hit someone like this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, so what's day. the difference between an elbow and a hand? Elbows exactly. Is, uh, is it harder? Sharp. I don't know. Sharper. Fuck. Yeah. You know, it's a little. It's a little harder. I yeah. mean, not really. I would be way more scared to hit someone with my elbow. That would hurt really bad. What's your what What's your favorite move? I think I asked it, but. Um. Trying to give all your competitors a, an edge right now. I don't know. Like, what's your go-to? He's like, I just <laughs> smoke I, screen. <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you think? Like, there's just so many different fucking so many. tricks. It'd be hard to say one. Yeah. Yeah. You just throw some clean combos. I can man. just stand both stances and do pretty much exact. Like, you equally, you could do both. Like very easily, just was natural. Like I could hit you as hard with my left hand as I could with my right. Shit. Like, fuck. Which, is, which is kind of <laughs> rare. Yeah. In fighting, like some people can switch stances and they can throw like a decent jab, but they can't throw a, a both, good combo. Yeah. yeah. And I've like yeah, so I feel like that's a huge advantage for me, defensively and offensively. What What do you think the 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 thing in fighting that you overcome the most? Um, well, that last fight, dude, I had fucking bruised ribs and yeah. I hadn't grappled for three weeks. I literally was running and hitting mitts. I didn't spar or grapple. And like going into that fight, I had no idea how my ribs were feeling because I hadn't trained. I didn't even fucking like put test it. Cause last time, three weeks before the fight, I tried to, and I couldn't even like, you couldn't hug me. My ribs hurt too, too, too bad. So going into that last fight, I was like, I cannot let this motherfucker grab me, which is like, <laughs> it's like a it's whole a added level, like layer yeah. of. And he was a fucking black belt jujitsu. Well, dude, Um, and you get so much of your confidence going into a fight from sparring. Like, okay, I can go 15 minutes. I just didn't spar. I didn't do my three fives at at the end of camp. You're like, okay, this is, you know, a fresh guy each round in a fight. It's obviously the same guy each round. So the whole fight, you're like, I can't let this guy touch me. And I I wasn't more like, I can't let this guy touch me. It was like, this motherfucker's not touching me. Like, I'm going to piece him up and I'm going to knock him out. That was like my thought process. And I was right. And how much does like so that crazy. thought process and like the mental side come into fighting? Like, well, two times. Listen, two times in this conversation, I I posed the question very similar like that, and his response every time was like, "No, I'm going to do this." Yeah. So yeah. it's clear. That's what made me but ask because it sounds comes, like a lot of that came from meditation, being able to interrupt my thoughts and have the thoughts that I want to have, rather than you close your eyes and you see like, "Oh my God, my fucking ribs are gonna break mm-hmm. this fight." Like you can. If once you get good enough at meditation, you can kind of start to form what kind of thoughts you actually want to have, rather than their thoughts taking over. And you can't you can't just do that. You got to yeah. practice meditation and and being able to 
interrupt your thoughts. Well, yeah, I think it, this is so fucking important. And just and, and just counter them, dude. Counter Especially in fighting, like you have no fucking idea what's gonna happen in fight. So you can visualize a fight, visualize a fight. Oh, it's going good, it's going good. Then you go in the fight and something bad happens that you didn't visualize. You gotta you gotta just be able to counter thoughts, counter something like, oh, this guy put me in arm bar. Oh well, fuck, I'm gonna stack him up, clear my elbow, and just counter it with with the right move. Yeah, and that is something that's like inspiring because I struggle with like intrusive thoughts. Like, I think it really affects. Does. Me. Yeah, yeah, everyone, everyone does. Yeah. And like learning and I still skills do. too. Like I'm just getting better at it. I'm not gonna. I don't it's, know if you ever become just like I'm just zen like all day. I don't think you no. really get. I well, mean, dude, but then you see like Aubrey and how deep he goes to it, and it's like. Fuck, I don't know if I want to get to that spot. Yeah, I still want to be a little deep, crazy, bro. He's, in it. he's deep. Yeah. It's it's impressive though. But you've done this so so young, man. Like yeah. I really think, like I told you this before off camera, whatever. I think you're gonna be like the fucking guy in the UFC in the next brother. few years, man. That's the plan. I mean, I've thought that since before I was in the UFC. Like I have interviews before I was in the UFC. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna be that guy. Before Connor was that guy. I was like a low level. I was like had a lot of amateur fights. Was turned pro. I wanted to kind of get into the UFC and be that motherfucker. Like Connor was the first. Yeah. I wanted to be that. Connor was that, which I thought was important for me to learn from. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna just go on a similar path, but but take it to another level, like a, even further. I believe than, it. Than I fully on. believe that, man. And with it, hopefully, not lose my mind. I think Connor. I mean, made a hundred million dollars. Like he fucking. You kind of you kind of try to stay humble, but. <laughs> it's hard. No, so he kind of, I think he kind of earned. The, he earned a little bit to go a little crazy. Oh yeah. Why not? Yeah. No, I, I don't want to fucking get to a point where I'm throwing a dolly at a fucking bus. Of course yeah. not. But I also kind of do. But it's like, dude. I mean, yeah. He what? He made the. He got the the proper twelve deal. Oh, he's God. got the the big the giant UFC. He's got Floyd fight. That, mm-hmm. that guy just. Money. I think what this. They just said he did like. He was the highest earner athlete this past year, wasn't he? Per minute, I per, think. Yeah, yeah, I saw but that. But I think it was 2021. He made like $8 million a minute because he fought Cowboy Cerrone. It was like a 40-second fight or something. Oh, okay. I think that's, that's what like the I think that's where the stats was that kind of fucked with people. Like, what the fuck? He makes more than Canelo? Yeah. Because Canelo fights for 36 minutes or whatever it is. And, yeah. You saw that too then. Yeah, I saw that. Sometimes I wonder, like, do you guys think that he, Conor McGregor is, like, the skill is there? Or do you think that his social media presence, his attitude and personality are what really, like, got him to where he is? He's an extremely high-level fighter that just truly believed in himself. I don't think he was, like, un- he obviously wasn't unbeatable. But his skill level is definitely. Yeah, you can't not you can't mm-hmm. you can't. I mean, the UFC you, you can't just be like I'm good at social media, so like get knocked out. Mm-hmm. You of know what I'm not. saying? Of like, of course not. But it feels like to be the highest earner. Oh like, yeah. Athlete. Oh yeah. You, it it took his personality and like polarizing 100%. people. One hundred percent exactly. Don't what it took. Well, I don't watch fighting, but I could tell you exactly who Conor McGregor yeah, exactly. is. Exactly, you know? and that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. about with him. Like, I think he has the same the same potential, if not greater. The same, like his trajectory is the same thing. Dude, could be so, higher. It's so funny. Like this lady came up to us before we left for uh, from Phoenix to here, and we were eating breakfast. And this uh, lady came up, and she just could not believe I was a fighter. No way, honey. You like just could not believe I was a fighter. Just so based on I, how you looked. Yeah, I don't know how. Like someone must have told her, and like she came over. It's I just so, so funny. I like. I just tell you. Don't think he rapper. looks like a fighter. No, when you Facetime me, I was like, oh, I'm like some hot tattoo artist wants to talk to me. That's I dope. Can, That's exciting. No, cool. I tell people I'm a rapper. He, he, he's done a tattoo for someone though. I really? didn't. No, no, six nine tattooed me. I didn't do shit. I would you can not tattoo me. No, I fucking can't. <laughs> I'm so bad with like. I no. Oh my god! When, and have you always had tattoos? Like as a kid, were you like a, the kid that I, was a minor I, with a sleeve? No, I waited until I was eighteen, and then I started getting like a, either like a religious tattoo or like a, a family tattoo. So my parents weren't like super mad, but I wanted to get tattoos. Uh, so right when I turned eighteen, so I, this one was like a religious one. Which one? This one right here. <laughs> Which one is it? That was it's, brand new. What king, is it? The king oh, chest. chest. I'm a which king one again? He's like touch that again. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, I don't. These I got two on. I don't know which ones are on which side. Like. I forget I have like face tattoos sometimes. I'm talking to like adults and there's like. Yeah, I've been staring at this heart the whole time. She's like, what the fuck? I'm just a you little. Up, it just doesn't. Connect you should get right one. There at the bottom. Uh, you should get a face tattoo. You should. I should, yeah. Might as well. Or a butt tattoo. Oh, a, yeah, we, we talked yeah, about that the any? other day. I yeah. have one. one. Yeah, it's right here. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's a constellation. Ooh. But what, what about you? When did you start getting tattoos? Fucking 18. Start nice. popping them on, yeah. When are we going to get Brad some tattoos? I have one tattoo right here. It does. Dang, I know. When do you throw in your ice that Steve gave you? Just just once in a while? Every once in a while, yeah. yeah. It's just rare for me, man. I just yeah. not a big, like... Do you have ice? <laughs> He's got a Rolex yesterday. Yeah. Oh, I'm just not a big yeah. jewelry guy. 
Yeah. I wasn't until Steve gave me some shit. And I'm like, no, I am. He like, pulls it off good, though. Yeah, no, you you, you pull it off. Yeah, yeah. It's fitting for you. For I know. Sure. I was supposed to, dude, we were supposed to go to this jewelry store um, Saturday morning at 10, but I fucking went to bed at 8. And he's knocking on my door, like, let's go. And I thought I was going to, I couldn't even move my legs or nothing. I'm like, I can't. I can't do it. It's so funny. The same thing. I tried to get him on the pod. He's like, nah, dude. Dude, if I would have came on the pod, it would have. I would have performed shitty, dude. I had you would have sat here and been like, f- I was just. It would not have been good. Dude. Glad we fucking. Made yeah, it happen. I'm glad you guys yeah, did. Yeah. For Where's real, the man. Rolex? I want to. Are you not That's wearing my it? Come on. I know. I'm like, why the fuck do you want to wear that shit? That's what I'm saying. They're investments. You have one. Those watches yeah. are investments. Yeah. Yeah. A dude. Rolex. Yeah, yeah. You just let it sit. <gasps> yeah, dude. And they just keep climbing. Yeah, I was supposed just to get this fucking roll iced out Rolex yesterday, and I fucking fucked up. Why? Saturday. I just didn't make it. I wasn't able to fucking open my eyes. Cause yeah. I'll be wearing two right now, just in case. Damn, I just can't. in case you need to know like what time <laughs> this one was. They don't even say like that's not yeah. even accurate. Like I don't even know. If, you know what I mean? Let's ask two. We gotta ask the audience questions yeah, okay. before we get out of here. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Okay. So yeah. audience question. I don't have a mic, so one of you guys can repeat it. But I it got says, it. do you believe in love, or what are your perceptions about love? Mm-hmm. And then also, this one's specifically for Brad. Mm. Do you still feel connected to your dad in any way? Or Fuck. Strategy, strategy you hold from the past that you have worked through and forgotten. P.S. You got Nigerians watching your pod. That's dope. Um, so the first question was, do do I do we believe in love? And what are your perceptions about love? And what are, what and what do I think? How do I view love? That's and a then, deep question. Yeah, that's. I mean, what do I think about it? Do I mean it's? I think love is the thing that every single person. It's the thing we're all trying to attain and feel for ourselves. Like it's like the ultimate currency. Yeah. Like why anyone does anything that is like you fight, you, you like some sort of love that you, you have for that, you know, it's just like you could have love for another person. Like everything we do revolves around love. I think it's, again, it's the ultimate currency. It's the thing that our lives are centered around. And sex obviously is like a derivative of it, mm-hmm. right? Not, not exactly like a, what? Well, yeah. I think like, being in the moment is love. Like yeah. we're in this podcast right now. There's love in this room. I think love's looked at very. Uh, that book, dude, Mastery Love, will make change your perspective on what love is. Yeah. So I think just being, anytime you're in the moment, anytime you're present, not in your head, that you're, you, there's love in the room. There's yeah. love, whatever you're doing when you're when you're present in the moment. Yeah. So I think you can be in love in so many different ways. Yeah, not just like intimate love. I mean, like friendship wise, like yes. you know what you're doing for like your work, or what you're doing like for your passion. But that's what I'm saying. I think we're all we're all just trying to. Uh, reveal that for ourselves I agree in and so I many different ways love is one thing but passion is another like I think with love comes passion but how much passion you have for something will dictate you know how well you do in that relationship or in your career or whatever it is like the passion that comes with love I think is the important thing because you can love someone or something and do nothing about it and I mean what's that going to do for anybody yeah. there's plenty of people that are in love and no they don't tell each other or they hate each other and fight you know yeah it's the thing we all want. It's just the thing we all look for. The things we all like search for, like yeah. straight up. That's why we do everything. Um, and then the other part of the question was what? Uh, do you still feel connected to your dad in any way, or is his tragedy um, something you hold from the past that you have worked through and forgotten? Do I still feel connected to my dad in any way, or is it something that I forgot? Of course. I mean, this is to give you the most basic answer. Is like, you know, it's a thing that uh, like. That kind of stuff never goes away. Losing a father figure, losing a parent, losing a brother, losing a sister. It doesn't matter. Like my situation is just a little different than someone else's. Um, <clears throat> that kind of stuff never, ever goes away. But it, the, the beautiful thing is like as you age, you come to terms with it differently throughout your life. And it allows you to, you know, use that energy towards other positive things in your life. And, and that's what I've been able to do over time. And it took me time. Yeah. Accepting it. You go through different phases of it. Um, but no, it'll, it'll never not be a part of my life. I mean, that's, that's the thing that drove me so, so like strongly when I was younger and now it's kind of evolved into a different thing in my life where I've kind of become the father figure that I always wanted. So it's always a part of my life and it's, it's the thing that got me to where I'm at and, you know, hopefully continues to take me further. So do you ever feel him like around you? I know it's like a weird question, but like, do you ever, do you believe in like ghost spirits, energy, things of that nature? And do you ever feel like he's around you? I had an experience the other day. So I'm wondering if you've ever had anything like that. Oh, I've had tons of experiences like that. Um, you're not going to like crazy detail about them, but like, yeah, I mean, I feel like I, I communicate with my father in a different way that obviously is not in me speaking to mm-hmm. you here. Um, more through the things that I'm doing. Fuck. This just makes me want to cry. Don't get upset. It's okay. 
Yeah, it's heavy shit, dude. I don't think a lot of people know what to do when a, when they lose a loved one. There's not like there's nothing, but you'd have to yeah. just maybe listen to professionals on a podcast, go to therapy. I just, I just thankfully I haven't lost a loved one, but I just don't really know what I would do. Same. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, you you just like you find a different way. Like a, a buddy of mine, his 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 mom just recently passed away, like kind of out of nowhere. And I was trying to explain to him because I've obviously dealt with this when I was really young that like your <clears throat> your your experience with them will never be the same. Like it's never physical. Like right now I could hear touch Sean, right? Like it's never going to be like that again. But you you learn at least what I try to do is learn a different way to connect with that person. Obviously not physically, right? Because you can't anymore. But through different means, you could allow yourself to connect or like. I almost kind of have them by your side in a way that can help either guide you or push you or, or keep you strong in moments where you feel weak. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of what I've done and focused on. Fuck so yeah. 100%. yeah. Anyways, next question before you fuckers make <laughs> me cry. God damn it, dude. Well, Sorry guys. We kind of covered that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We covered that. I know, but that's that funny. Yo, oh, the classic. God. Jail. And what is your life goal? So where do you see yourself in 10 years and what is your life goal? Uh, dude, I, I've always hated these five, 10 year questions because it's just like everything that I've done to this point, I'm like, I'm still just figuring it out. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of what life is. It's just trying to figure shit out and you don't really know. I just know that I go towards the things that make me happier, the things that I, I feel most fulfilled doing and I just try and do more of them. Mm -hmm. So like. I don't really have a direct, like, this is what I want to do or where I want to be exactly. Cause I didn't even know right now where I'm sitting that this is exactly what I wanted. It was just right. like, kind of like a general idea and fuck, I made it. I'm grateful, mm -hmm. you know, 37, hundred milli champ, champ, drug addict. No, <laughs> I want Yeah. I want, I want to be the biggest entertainer in the world. I want fuck you money for whatever reason. I've always wanted that since I was like mm -hmm. a kid. And it's like, uh, it's a mo. I don't know. It's like, I know I don't need that. And yeah. I, like if I don't, it's like that's not what makes me happy. But it's like something that's like that's what I do. I wake up and you know I, I enjoy the business aspect of the stuff that I do. So I won't fuck you, money, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. What about you? Just keep fucking enjoying my time and and having good relationships with the people I'm around. Yeah. I know there's not going to be a point where it's like, oh, I got to this point. Now I'm happy mm -hmm. and I'm happy forever because I got to this point. So it's just enjoying everything I do. I want to be able to help my, my dad. He works really hard, and I want to be able to retire him and buy him nice things and give him the life that he wants. So yeah. that's where I want to be in 10 years. Schwab was saying that you wanted to get a, a super fight. A super fight? Oh, Did he so, talk about that on the podcast? Yeah. Or no, he brought it, out, brought it up after. So yeah. what if they offered you, they said, okay, boxing match with KSI. No, I, not, not KSI. No, who's the big bodybuilder? Georgie, true, 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 true Georgie. No, no, not him. Oh, who's the shit. big black bodybuilder who's gay with a ponytail? What? Oh, Whoa. I know who you're talking about. With a ponytail? Kai, Kai. Kai, I know who you're talking about. Is I have Kai right gay? Here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. The big fucking jack black guy. Kai Green. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did he come out? Like, he's gay. Yeah, it was, it's clear that he's gay, I thought. Was he on Rogan? Oh, I didn't know that. Did you, what if they offered you that one? Uh, I, I would love to see that more than yeah, anything. You get canceled, you knock him out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I really want to do boxing I think I'd rather do MMA Would you? I yeah. think that'd be good I'm not seeing I'm not seeing gay here I'm I don't pretty th sure I don't think he came, gay I don't think Oh he came. I see top bodybuilder goes gay for pay Well he, that was when he fucked the grapefruit Everyone knows about the grapefruit thing But I don't think he ever came out and said he was he gay fucked the grapefruit? That's yeah okay, Is it? That's not gay to fuck a grapefruit Well, well that's, that's what they're weird. saying Like I think he, he got paid Like some someone paid him to like do Post it, it. Fuck, who wants to pay me to fuck a grapefruit? Yeah. No, I so I don't know. I don't yeah. But you would like to get get a little rumble. A little yeah, rumble. A little MMA. Dude, you got to. I think MMA. it'd be good for you. I yeah. think it would be too. But it can't be boxing. Yeah. I want to use my whole someone. I want to use my whole body. Yeah. I would love to see you fight somebody. My every comment DM, who's Brad fighting? When is Brad gonna fight? I can beat Brad's ass, let him fight me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone on the internet can beat me up. That's same, all. Same. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Fucker friend. Jess, Wait. then Brad, and then the guest answers. So that's the order they wanted. 
they want you to answer first yeah. so okay this is the guy this is definitely a guy asking like how do i get the girl he said that i know yeah. that i want so, Who I know is supposed to be the one. Depends how you lost her. Okay. Yes. Go. You want to go ahead? First. I know what I would say to this. Put me on the spot here. Um, genuinely, the only way to get somebody back is to just focus on yourself, be the best version of yourself, and yeah. hope that they recognize that. There is no way to, no algorithm to get somebody back or to make them miss you and yeah. wanna be with you again. It doesn't work. I've watched every fucking YouTube video. I've, put, I've looked it up on Reddit. I've, I have, because she I- She looked it up on Reddit, so it's official. I have, mm -hmm. no, I've tried looking it up because I've been in this situation where I'm like, damn, this is the one. They're not the one. I'm telling you they are not the one. You will know when it's the one, and it's not gonna be this hard and this painful and conflicting it is it's going to be easy and healthy and it's going to feel good so just focus on yourself and yeah. hope that that person recognizes that and if they don't fuck them yeah that's the thing you you, you nailed it focus on yourself because like maybe in your mind this is the one but maybe in their, the other person's mind it's not and maybe it's just it's a different time maybe you need different timing in life like maybe you spend more time on yourself that person spends more time on themselves and at some point you come together and it makes sense but to say like this person is the one and I know and I need to get them back is like you're you're already kind of in like shaky water here where it's like something's going on where it's almost like you need to focus inward like you said on yourself if the timing makes sense for that person to come back and be in your life then then that's going to kind of happen obviously it doesn't just happen out of nowhere but you know if you're I'm just say this if you're constantly trying to get that person back like come back in my life come back in my life come back in my life I want you let's make it work that person is going farther and farther and farther away absolutely because at the end of the day real people want what they can't have. Like if you're banging in their line all day, like telling them how available you are for their attention, they're not gonna wanna give it to you. You really just need to better yourself and be the best version of you. Like that's the only time anyone wants to put energy into anything. Yeah, what do you think? You got covered it, boys. That's girls. it. Dude, I forgot who, what relationship expert I heard it from, but they said like after every big breakup, it gets worse for like six months. Mm. But after six months, you start adapting and you like start yeah. to go on with your shit. Absolutely. That's a fact. I think that's it. Boom. That's it for today. Thank you guys so fucking much for canceling your fucking flight dude, and, and dude, coming yeah. here Thank and doing so this. Much. I appreciate that. Wonderful meeting you, too. you guys are solid as fuck. You have been since the day that I met you, and I wish you guys nothing but success. And I, I know, I believe just as much as you believe that you're going to be the one, man. I believe it. I'd I fucking bet on it. If there was a bet right now, I'd fucking make dude, that bet. That's you, good, man. For I real. would too. I would too. So <laughs> check them out. Check them out. The podcast. You got a YouTube you vlog? Timbo Sugar Show. Yeah, YouTube is Sean O'Malley. That's where we post the Timbo Sugar Show. I stream on Twitch, Sean O'Malley UFC. Yep. Uh, you got the Instagram. Do you have OnlyFans? No, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, I'm find sure. him, check him out. Drop a like, drop a review. Uh, you know, leave a good comment. Uh, Apple iTunes, leave a cool comment. Give the five star, all that good shit. Subscribe to the channel. Turn the post notifications on. All that shit. We're out of here. Thank you guys Bye so guys. much for watching. To the tuggy. <laughs> Let's go. You guys are really going to go get a tuggy? Yeah, do you really want a tuggy? I mean, I'm yeah. Solid. You guys have some shit you said you do? Yeah, I guess I gotta go to a fucking. That's with the landlord, right? At two. At two. It's one. Oh, I wanna make sure. Nice to meet you. you as well. This was so fun. Are that was fun. Glad you came. Thank you. Me too. And Dude, the book that you, you said, it was. Appreciate it. So, did you already call the book? No, I haven't. I'll call it. That was fun. I'm so glad we canceled that sh flight and came. Yeah, me too. Well, I was gonna be pissed. I'm like, that's the part I wanted to do. Yeah, because these motherfuckers came here like, like you did. You did Shab, Theo. No, we didn't do Theo. Oh, we didn't. We Theo. didn't have time. Okay. Shab and that's then. That's it. Oh no, we Jeff. did Jeff, but I was, Jeff. dude, it was dog. I swear to God, like I was yeah. fucked. It was dog shit. I was yeah, so fucked up. Mike Malak was on us and he talked all the time. Got but it. But I was like, and Mike was our, he was driving us around. Yeah. But dude, the Jeff, went, you guys didn't listen. You guys were, dude, we were in the other room. But dude, I was just sad. I felt the, I had slept two hours. I was coming out from Molly, had a horrible hangover, the lights were on me, and I was just like, and yeah. from me, Mike did good, Jeff did good. So I'm glad I was able to. Yeah, it was him. good.